Welcome to Fat Man on Batman. I'm Kevin Smith. Uh, okay, man, 51. We're at the first episode heading toward 100, uh, which I guess it'll take us about a year to get to episode 100. But who knew that we'd ever uh, get as far as, as we got? A dopey little idea. Like, I'd love to do a podcast where I sit around and talk about fucking Batman. Uh, we just kept going with it and, and have gone wonderful places, met really cool people and heard great things about Batman. But the, uh, or, uh original Beatle beside myself, man, <laughs> the guy, uh, with whom it all kind of began and has provided some of the greatest episodes, not just the earliest, but some of the greatest episodes, Fat Man on Batman returns to the Fat Cave for the first time in a long, long ass time, man. Uh, you know his work, uh, from across a bunch of different stuff, but here in the Fat Cave, We've discussed, uh, his, his groundbreaking, uh, Emmy winning. Yeah. Uh, the, the work that still to this day impacts. You've heard from a bunch of people on this show how, how the Batman animated series impacts their work. Scott Snyder, Greg Capullo, even Grant Morrison. Everybody yeah. talks about the Batman animated series. Everyone talks about. Uh, the writer of Batman animated series, the heart and soul of it. Uh, you know, if, if Bruce Tim was the eyes, fingers and brains and th the, the heart and soul of the Batman animated series was, will always be, uh, the man who created Harley Quinn without whom I got no, uh, who knows what my kid would have been named, Batman Jr. Uh, <laughs> welcome back to the Fat Cave, the legend, Mr. Paul Dini. Hello, sir. Hello, Kevin. How are you? Nice to be here. Um, now, just before we went, we were talking about, um, your dog. You've got a nine year old dog that's going through some medical issues. Yeah. We have two Boston Terriers, Muggsy and Deuce. And, uh, Muggsy and Deuce. Muggsy and Deuce. Those are the names they came with. They were adopted from, uh, company uh organization called look at Boston you you're Buddies. like she, you get shelter dogs like the rescue yeah. dogs rather yeah. than like I, w I want my fresh shit off the rack i want to you know that new pup smell no you're no. happy to rescue and bring them you're like the batman of fucking <laughs> of, of animals without homes adopt dude. a dog adopt a pet man that's the only way to go don't yeah. get all bob barker on this oh, show, okay <laughs> the resident bob barker oh, that's my Fat betty man white you know <laughs> she's also big into that um but, uh, yeah, you know, we had, uh, there's this organization and they had two dogs that didn't get along with other dogs or litter mates. So mm -hmm. we adopted them about four years ago and they're about nine or 10. We don't exactly know, but they're somewhere about nine. Okay. So they've only been with you for half a decade at yeah. this point, yeah. max. Yeah. Okay. This isn't like I, this fucking, I picked the one straight out the litter and it looked me in the eye and said, you will be dad. And it, <laughs> that's right. That's this right. is a real like, Hey man, we came in to rescue these dogs. So yeah. your relationship with these dogs. Yeah. Five years max. Yeah, yeah. I just say all this because the next piece of information is going to be jaw dropping for a lot of people. Oh, okay. So, um, so, uh, they, they, they got sick this year. One of them, need, Muggsy needed a, uh, splenectomy and when he was in there we had deuce checked out and we find deuce has this big old tumor in his head oh. so uh we had to go and uh and uh make a decision you know do we leave it alone because it doesn't seem to be growing any but it's uh you know if we leave it alone then it's going to flare up and suddenly we're going to lose him really suddenly or, or it becomes inoperable so there are two choices you know you can try and you know uh you know they, they were they were advocating some form of radiation and what we went with was this uh this thing called alternately gamma knife or laser knife. And laser knife. Yeah. Well, when I heard gamma knife, I was going, "Oh man, it's cool. He's gonna Hulk up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have Hulk. I'm gonna have the Hulk dog. Paul Dini's dog, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> subjected to gamma radiation, turns into that fucking poodle that he fought in that fucking That's right. Hulk <laughs> movie. <laughs> Hulk dogs. You won't like me when I'm angry. <laughs> So wait, so what is the gamma knife or laser knife? What do they do? Well, what they do is they uh, – it, it was like three treatments uh, over er every other day. Mm -hmm. And they don't have it here in L.A. Uh, for dogs. They it, it's, it's, it's become really successful on people. But because of the cost, it was really pretty expensive. But, uh, you know, we'd been saving our money. We uh, – it's rarely done on dogs. And the facility that does it the best is down in San Diego. So for about a week, every other day, we were driving Deuce down to San Diego to the animal care center there, which is very good. And they, in turn, would take him to this other lab where they would do the treatment on him. And when you say lab, you don't mean like a yellow lab. No, Fucking no. lab coat who's like, oh, he's the doctor? <laughs> Dr. Woofy? Dr. Woofy, right this way. <laughs> Should we be paying this dog? 
That were, oh, have you seen the trailer for Peabody and Sherman? It's pretty good. Really? Yeah, yeah. It's pretty good. Talking about talking dogs. But... Re- and is it like C- CG? Is it like yeah. Pixar-ish? Yeah. So yeah. do they look like the cartoon characters? They do. They do. They they look like uh, the Jay Ward character. Not dead on, but they do have, you can tell it's Peabody and Sherman. And Ty who's Burrell, doing the voices? Ty Burrell does uh, Peabody from then, uh, Modern Family. Okay. Yeah. Oh. I forgot who did Sherman. Sorry, kid. Wow, he's actually a pretty good choice. Yeah, yeah. Um, I remember at one point they were talking to Robert Downey Jr. about doing Mr. Peabody. Oh, he have been good too, yeah. Um, all right. So, so anyway, Deuce had the treatment and that, that stopped it as far as we know. He's, he's fine. So you took a laser knife to this motherfucker's head yeah. and just took you, the Batman of dogs, yeah. took a laser knife to the cancer, which is the Joker of dogs. That's right. And, uh, for all you know, uh, there's no, like it, when you say laser knife, they don't cut this motherfucker's head open. No, it's, it's like blasting like, light yeah. into it. Yeah, it's like somebody with a lightsaber going in his head and taking it out Jedi style. No, but <laughs> I know that sounds wicked. I'm like, can I go if they do it again? Can yeah. I go for the fifth treatment? I, I, but it's not that. Like they it. just basically flash a high intensity light at it. Yeah, yeah. It's it's the laser light. I'm I'm not sure how it how it how it goes. We got the readouts and the schematics and everything, but basically <laughs> they bombard it with radiation mm. in a very concentrated area. And, uh, that, uh, that stops the growth and it, and it also red, renders the, uh, the tumor inert. So. Shecky, we're talking about a dog that was worth fucking save. Shut up! <laughs> All right. So now here's the laser knife is mouth shut. Yeah, oh my God. I'm going to take a laser knife to her goddamn heart. <laughs> um, here's the important part yeah. of the story. Yeah. What's this kind of thing run? Fucking $200? <laughs> Oh, well, no, Kev, it's a bit more. $500. Oh, no, no, no. What does it cost to blast light oh, at a dog's tumor? What does an Oldsmobile cost? I mean, what, what's a... Uh, what's, uh, Give him the price tag. Give him the sticker uh, shock that I have. This is love, people. Again, this is not a puppy. Like, it's not like I had this puppy. I picked her straight from the litter and she was there at my prom. Like, when no one was there for me. It's not, like you've known this dog five years, a good portion but, of time, but yeah. It's also a dog where you're like, what? People didn't want this dog? What's this fucking dog's problem? Like $12,000. That you, that's why I say you're the yeah. Batman of dogs, not because yeah. you rescued this motherfucker, because you're Bruce Wayne with yeah. enough money to save this fucking dog's life, dude. That is heroic. <laughs> Or I wore another or word. A bunch, a bunch of people in the audience are like it's stupidic. Alan Burnett just keeled over. He's listening to this. He goes, oh, he's one on one. <laughs> Alan Burnett is always saying, "What if you look? If you have to take that dog to the vet, you might as well just leave him by the side of the road." <laughs> Why, man? Just because you it's rescued? It's gonna him? cost you so much money, dude. Listen. They at one point, my old dog Scully, God rest her soul, she yeah. rest in peace. She long gone, but well, yeah. a couple of years gone now. Yeah. Uh, and her buddy here, Mulder, right yeah. next to me is, is looking as shaky as she was toward oh, the end. His no. back legs are starting to oh, go. No. So anyway, we took her, her into the vet at one point. And let me see. She's got to be at this maybe two, three at this point. Yeah. Three years we've had her. And, uh, the doctor's just like, she's got, uh, you know, hip dysplasia. She's a puppy farm puppy. So yeah. the older she gets, she's not going to get old because her hips and blah, blah, blah. So she can't really live past five, seven, you know, unless you go and operate. And we're yeah. like, all right, of course. Like we had, we bonded with this dog at yeah. this point. So we're like, right on, man. What's that kind of thing cost? And he was like $20,000. And I was like, for what? He's like, for brand new hips. Yeah. So I was like, is there a, like a used <laughs> hip program? I mean, I'm, I'm not for nothing. Program? <laughs> this is the family dog. Man. Yeah. Yeah. And so he's like, there is an alternative, less expensive. Uh, yeah. He goes five thousand dollar option. It's off. Oh, all right, what is that? So we go in, we saw off the top of her hip bones, Ooh. so they don't fucking grind into her leg bones. Yeah, and that kind of butchery, man. That was the cheap version of like bionic yeah. hip. Yeah, or or this or butcher hip. Uh-huh. And we didn't. We were just like, you know what? We're gonna take our chances. And we never had the fucking surgery done. Yeah. Yeah. She lived to be 12, 13. Yeah. Uh, she's, you know, I mean, by the end, the legs went, but yeah. like this guy, Mulder, he was champion bred fucking. He, we bought him at a kennel and he cost a couple grand and shit. Yeah. And now even his back legs are starting to go. Like, yeah. you know, it's just age. It's just what happens. But 
Scully beat the odds. And when we were presented with a fucking like, you know, if you love this dog, yeah. it's going to be 20,000. If you, if you love this dog, it's $5,000. If you really love this dog, as you should, yeah. it's 20,000. And we were like, we choose neither. You, on the other hand, were like, we got to bite the bullet and fucking yeah. do it, man. Yeah. Laser knife the motherfucker. What's the bill? Yeah. That must have been a laser knife to your soul when they were like 12K. Yeah. It was, it was, it was up there. But you're like, yeah. I got to go write a few more hulks, everybody. Yeah. But I got it. Yeah. Tell them what you're working on now. For those that don't remember, Paul, uh, of course, has a fucking long history with the character of Batman. That's why he's uh, the second Beatle. He's the, uh, the, who do you want to be, McCartney or Lennon? Lennon. Fuck. Uh, all right. No, no. I'll be McCartney. I'll be Thank McCartney. God. Holy yeah, shit. Yeah, there you go. Right. He's the uh, McCartney to my Lennon for this uh, fat man on Batman. I'll experience. take Ringo. You know, that's Ring- Ringo's good. You're not, you, or P, was Pete Best, he's the fifth Beatle and shit? Yeah, I guess That so. ain't you, man. You, no, know, no. you were there for the origin of this right, thing. Right, right. You were there when we were like strumming together and uh, that's right. talking about, let's drop some acid and write some fucked up lyrics. Yeah. That came later. Yeah, yeah. You were there when we were like, when I was like, let's go to Hamburg yeah. and cover fucking like classics she was just yeah. 17 and all that shit yeah you and me are in hamburg together. that's right we're in the rathskeller playing uh till there was you you know <laughs> yes so we love everywhere but i never we're, we're sharpening yeah. our chops together oh yeah um okay so obviously uh what i'm getting at is paul's been here from the start yeah and in, in going off on that beatles yeah. exposition i completely for, forgot what i was setting up for. Oh, we we're talking about to the Batman. twelve the so, twelve thousand dollar dog yes how we got there but you know the thing is like i'm i'm doing the hulks and misty is doing voiceovers on all these games she's done every big game this year she's paul done, is married to misty lee and uh she's a number one a magician he right married zatanna yeah, essentially yeah. but she's doing what now she's doing voiceover she's doing uh, she does the voice of aunt may and in, in spider-man the new one the one the that Moja one. writes for, for yeah that's right Right. That's right. So and, you, has he, I wonder if Mosier's written dialogue for your lady. Yes, she has. Yes, yeah. That's wild. Yeah. What a small world. And uh, actually, she, they're using sexy this, Aunt May. Yeah, the younger Aunt the May, the cougar Aunt May, yeah. the milf Aunt, Aunt Milf. And, <laughs> <laughs> and she's going to do some other Marvel. Dude, how characters fucking wild is that? You fuck Aunt May on a reg? No, I fuck Zatanna on a reg. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <they're- laughs> It's funny. He's like, no, dude, no, 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 no. <laughs> Let's no, keep it like, where blood. Like, That's like, true. You like, literally do. You know, it's like. And Paul worked on Zatanna book at one point. Yeah, like, he's got history with the character. It's it's funny when you see him together, and and when he they first got together, he was yeah. like, what does she do? She's a magician. I'm like, holy shit, yeah. dude. Yeah. There were two women that he could find and fall in love with. One was going to be a dark vigilante of the night. Yes. Or the, or the other would be a magician. Magician. He found them. Right. The chances of finding. Or a psycho clown. <laughs> Those are the ones I run away from at Comic Con. <laughs> um, uh, but Paul has, uh, of course, aside from the, uh, the countless episodes of Batman, the animated series, creating the character of Harley Quinn, mm-hmm. working on the Arkham uh, Asylum games. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, working on the, uh, Superman animated series, which included the Batman Superman yeah. crossover and whatnot. Um, he, he's done a shit ton of DC Warner's work, Tiny Tunes, yeah. going all the way back to Fat Albert. If you've never heard the first episode or two of Fat Man on Batman, yeah. do yourself a favor, go back and refresh. I get so many compliments on those. And, and everybody tweets me, when are you going to be back on the show? So today, if it's okay, I'm going to go back and tweet just back from the fat game. Absolutely. Is, um, will this be next week or this a will be 51. So right, it'll okay. be right at, yeah, it'll be the week after this one. Coming oh, cool. Out. Yeah. This so is a Halloween episode. He's right? got the, he's got the, the credentials, of course, yeah. but. What he's doing right now, oddly enough, is after a lifetime in the trenches of DC, he fucking switched over camps and he's now deep in the heart of Marvel. He's That's working right. at Marvel Animation Studios. Studios, Animation yeah. Studios. Mm-hmm. So you're doing, I, last time we were talking to you, you were all over to Hulk. The, yeah. Hulk. What is it called? Hulk Smash or Team Hulk Smash? and the Agents of Smash. Agents of Smash. This is like the Hulk is kind of like dragged into, uh, reluctantly into this, uh, Kind of, the, there's this weird dysfunctional family of other Hulk-like creatures. They've got no place else to be, and they're destructive on their own. So the Hulk, kind of, in more of a paternal role than we've ever seen him, just decides, you know, okay, you know, I'm going to lead this group, and we do it like a reality show. It's sort of like Duck Dynasty with superheroes, where we do these cutaways to him going, "Look, I don't know what's up with Red Hulk today, but he's just totally out of control," you know. And then we cut back <laughs> to the that Clancy, action. Clancy Brown is yeah. voice and stuff. Oh, and he's Eliza's great. a voice as uh, well. Uh, Eliza's a uh, uh, She Hulk, and uh, she's yep. great. And uh, um, and then uh, Seth Green is a bomb, and Ben uh, Diskin, who's a terrific actor, is a. Uh, um, uh, Scar. Mm-hmm. So, and Fred Tattashore is the Hulk. And Fred Tattashore is the man. He's the man. He's just great. 
So you've been doing this for how many episodes so far? We've done a first season and, uh, and, uh, and, um, you know, we're just keeping going with that, you know, we're, and, um, and I saw your name all over the, what did I want? Oh, fucking all over the internet. I saw Paul Dini Maleficent, Paul Dini Maleficent. And that's the movie with fucking Angelina Jolie playing the witch. Yeah. From Sleeping Beauty. Yeah. So uh, Paul's always fucking busy. Um, well, that's. A rumor. <laughs> <laughs> um, he is, uh, he's, but, but when we sit down in the fat cave, yeah. I mean, of course, we always talk about whatever's going on in his life in general, but our concentration is always, uh, Batman. And so I pulled up a bunch of stuff for us to kind of like, uh, what is that show where he's like, Pat Buchanan, that guy barking at people, Crossfire or something? Oh, like yeah, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah. Around it, we don't have that many people, so yeah. it won't be like, it'd be like me going, Batman, uh, the, the Batman. case of the day is Batman, Paul Dini. Keep Crusader, uh, yes. Uh, it's, it's just uh, a round, like a round table, a bunch of discussions yeah. will go, uh, uh-huh. topics that will hit. Okay. Um, there's not necessarily one like overall theme to the issue, of, uh, to the episode, other, of course, than of course, other than Batman, but mm-hmm. it's not like, uh, we're doing a commentary track, although we'll get back to those, uh, later on. Yeah, uh, that'd in, be fun. In the next few weeks. But, uh, this is just, I lined up a, a few topics to talk about. And then Paul brought up a great one. Um, uh, the, he sent me an email this week going, we must have need, need. <laughs> um, so we'll start there. The amateur schlemmer. I can never pronounce that. I, <laughs> I just remember it as being like the catalog when I was a kid where I was like, I wish I was rich. Yeah. I wish I was richy rich because then I could have these things, these yeah. amazing, wonderful things. Very pricey items. Some very pricey. Some like well outside. Nothing you ever needed was sold at the Amateur Schlemmer store. Uh, on the f- cover of their Christmas catalog, it's always like time f- platform, one for sale, con- contact V Von Doom, <laughs> $12 billion. <laughs> <laughs> so, but this sounds like a fantasy item. Yeah, yeah. But is not and actually puts a dream within reach of the uh, the common man, well maybe not the common man, but the uh, a common the man, foolish is, man, the fool, money. yeah, the guy who's look, yeah, for the guy who paid 12k for the laser knife <laughs> to the dog's head, this is a no-brainer purchase yeah, here, right. ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Amateur Schlemmer is offering for $200,000 the Adam West Batmobile, the Bill Dozier Batmobile. Yeah. Now this is a full kit working car. Yeah, street legal. You, they, it takes about a year to make them. And you, you put your order in now. You'll probably have it September, October of next year, and you'll have an honest to god street legal 1966 crime scope everything Batmobile. What's the cost? Two hundred thousand dollars. Oh my god! Now, but we can get them. How? Kickstarter. <laughs> Nobody's gonna fuck it back a Kickstarter. Yes, like, you gave twelve k to laser knife a dog's head. Like fuck you. Get your own Batmobile. I money. saved up for that. My wife paid for half of that with her video game money. So anyway, so it was like, it was, how do we do it? How do we kickstart it? I I, I don't know, but I it it sounds good. Like we put it out there. Kick <laughs> sounds good, but it also sounds like I hear a couple fucking rich guys <laughs> want free money to buy a Batmobile. Fuck you. <laughs> no, that's the equivalent of telling us to eat cake. But people put Kickstarter out all the time. They got money. It's like, hey, kickstart my book where I'm going to make, uh, I'm going to make, uh, this TV show pilot, you know? This and is so just kickstart my greed. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> but, Life has been so good to me. I just want the one thing that I'm missing, a Batmobile. Well, you have fans and I have fans that would love to see us drive around in a Batmobile. <laughs> hey, not to, not to that tune. They're like, look, if I'm putting money behind this, do I get to borrow it? That would have to be part of it. Well, hey, oh, well fucking, we're talking seriously about purchasing a Batmobile, Shecky. Yeah, really. If you we do this, <laughs> if we do this, motherfuckers who put in have to be able to borrow it anytime they want. Well, I wouldn't go that far. I'd say that if we oh are driving God. somewhere near their house, yes, we could pick them up and and give them a ride, and maybe they could post for a picture with it. I don't think you understand this Kickstarter thing at all. Yeah, I do. You put it out, and they give you money, and you get to buy. Shit. <laughs> You're right. You don't. You don't. You don't understand it. <laughs> okay, so we'll you got to be more diplomatic if we're going to take their money. <laughs> You gotta let him borrow the car whenever we want, Dad. Oh crap! Okay. <coughs> could you be? Could you imagine if people were just calling you up? There's a special. Think about this. Yeah, I'm fucking being creative. Shut up. <laughs> we're buying cars in here. Come on, you're not you helping. You do this deal our- where it's co-funded by a bunch of fans and whatnot. Yeah. 
But you have to be oh, able to, you have to God. let them use the car whenever they want. Only in like hour shifts. Sure. Yeah. You can't like take it to go fucking, you know, do six hours. That's special occasions. You right. can pre ask for that right. like six months in advance. But our deal is if you co, if you finance our Batmobile dream, mm-hmm. whenever you're in California, cause that's where the Batmobile would be. I think so. Yeah. You come, you come to us. You got it for an hour has to come back, you know, after yeah. an hour, it's got a governor on it that just shuts the engine off. Yeah. Now I'm just creating technology. Tony Stark like, like this robot car will drive. It you. probably has it in the dashboard. There's all sorts of stuff. All on. sorts of tools. Yeah. Okay. So we got to let them be able to do that. Yeah. For an hour in order for them to be, to get you 24 seven. You can't give them your fucking cell phone number, of no. course. But you get a dedicated red phone under a glass jar. Yeah. Bring so, the car over. Yeah. Got a date. Beep, beep, yeah. beep. Yeah. And your yeah. wife is just like, why didn't you just pay for this fucking car yourself? So we didn't have to be beholden to all these people. That phone would never fucking stop, dude. No. What, if I was a kid in Iowa to put a fucking five bucks into this thing, yeah. I'd be calling to be like, I'm not there, but could I use it? Yeah. yeah. Is this Paul? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, hey, come on, man. I, I gave you five, 50 bucks. You know, I got, and you got a date tonight. I love heart of ice. <laughs> Click and hangs up. Next morning, we're sweeping condoms out of the thing. <laughs> yeah, I like, guess Jeffrey had a good night last night. <laughs> you call the Batmobile. I call the Fuckmobile. I'm like, hey, you can call it that. Just don't use it as such. That's like turbines to speed. Yeah. Um, you know what we could do is like we get enough of these. We could do our own gumball rally. Oh, fuck. What, that, like a series of Batmobiles? Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, it's like the, the more money we ask for on Kickstarter, then, you know, Garmin can get one. You can get one. You know, Ming gets one, and we do, we do Cannonball Run, where all Batmobiles though, yeah, where it's like you and Muse in one, it's Ming and it's Walton and Brian in one, and then we film it, and the perk is they get to go to the opening night movie of us driving our Batmobiles across <laughs> the country. <laughs> But I do think you're on to something. Who put out those Cannonball Run movies? That was Warner Brothers, yeah. wasn't it? Oh, Hal Needham just died. Shit. I know. Oh, we fuck. just missed our fucking opportunity. Hal Needham, the great stunt director, the man behind the Cannonball Run films. I have an orangutan in a Robin suit ready to go as my partner. <laughs> Which, to be fair, pre-Cannonball Run, yeah. there was the Gumball Rally. The Gumball Rally. Same yeah. idea. Crazy race. Yeah. yeah. Eccentric people. But you could. if I think Warner Brothers did the, the, Gumball, the Cannonball Run movies. Yeah, I they think. did. Yeah. You could literally reboot that franchise with just Batmobiles. With a bunch of idiots and Batmobiles running across the country. Jesus. But you've got a, you've got the Batmobile. You've now had a few different Batmobiles. Yeah. So you've got the fucking Adam West Batmobile. You've got the Tim Burton yeah. Batmobile. You've got the Joel Schumacher. Uh huh. Two variations there. Yeah. Of a Batmobile. You've got the Tumblr. Uh huh. You've got the Bat Pod. Yeah. What am I missing? You've got the Batman uh, cycle, the Bat cycle with the yeah, sidecar. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and some people will be like the Bat Wing. No, no, no. Real. You got to keep it on the ground. It's got to be, be real. Got to keep this shit yeah. real, people. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the Bat, but the, you could use the Bat Copter from uh, yeah. Adam West Batman uh-huh. and Bat Boat if somebody just wanted to go take the river out. Bingo. We got nine fucking vehicles. One more, dude. Just give me one more one Bat more. vehicle from the real world. One more Bat vehicle. Did they ever? Oh, fuck. What else did they do? Uh, well, the forthcoming Batmobile. You know there'll be one in Zack Snyder's. Yes, that's right. Whatever that one is. So Bat- Batmobile of the future. The fucking stupider movies have been made than this. And you yeah. build it around. Like, you know how they did that fanboys movie where it was like, this boy's got cancer. We want to see Star Wars before it comes. Yeah. yeah. Spoilers if you haven't <laughs> seen fanboys. <laughs> but I think they sold it on that yeah, yeah. concept as well. Same thing here, man. Yeah. Like not, maybe not cancer, maybe something else. Yeah. Maybe some sort of like, he's fucking got aged foot disease. Yeah. I'm like, what's that? <laughs> like his fucking foot is aging at 10 years, 10 times <laughs> the rest of his body. <laughs> this 12 year old boy is a six year old foot. <laughs> Something that won't offend people and shit like that. But he loves Batman. Yeah. <laughs> so his dream is to fucking like, you know, ride in the best Batmobile. Yeah. And they organize a race. And yeah. And it's all the Batmobiles. So he eventually yeah. gets to ride in each one and shit. And, and a- they have these truckers keeping the cops up. So we can get a little convoy in there. Too. <laughs> yes. There is a fucking. There, is there a bat truck? There has to be a bat. There's truck. a heartless uh, County Mountie. <laughs> <laughs> who's just like, you're like, I don't care that this boy's got aged foot disease. The law is the law. And even Batman would respect that. Dude, this shit writes itself. <laughs> We're fucking rich. Yeah, there we go. 
<laughs> Copyright Kevin Paul. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> what do we call it, dude? Uh, the Bat Ball Rally. <laughs> oh, <laughs> shit. The Bat Ball Run or something like that. <laughs> Which sounds a little dirty. As yeah, well. it does. Yeah, yeah. So we're picking up the cougar audience. Uh, we, yeah, that yeah. Aunt May audience. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> From the fucking Spidey cartoon. We never make it across the country. We pull into the first Arby's we'd see. All be witched in there because we couldn't make the turn in the back. It's like, here we go. Oh, hey, Arby's. That sounds good. Can I get some horsey sauce? <laughs> okay, that's 600 big beef and cheese. <laughs> Those motherfuckers don't even move that fast, I don't think. No. Like, I think the top speed that the Tim Burton Batmobile did was like, 29 30 yeah. miles an hour yeah so our race across the country <laughs> that one comes dead last <laughs> but the boat man oh, there was no bat truck though i can think of you know alex ross has a batmobile that he made he and his brother made which version a, from adam west no from the 40s they found an old 40s car i don't know which make it is but he showed it to me in his garage and they actually cut the metal to make the fin and the head on it, and they painted it up, and it is the old 1940s Dick Sprang, you know, big, huge, rounded Batmobile. The fuck is there pictures of this online? Uh, that wins Instagram. Yeah, it does. I mean, that that I, I don't know. He's not online anywhere, so I'd have to I'd have to get him to send me a picture of the sucker. But it's it's amazing. He showed it to me in his garage oh once. My God. And I said, if I if I was a kid and I lived next door to you, I would egg you every day. <laughs> <laughs> It's like you so he them. made the no, one but, with the big fucking face on the front, yeah, the big cow did. catcher kind he, of face. So, so he'd actually come out of nowhere and you know enter in as a as as like Racer X. That is a good fucking idea, dude. Yeah. Like we're always trying to yeah. like get the ones that exist and shit to the point where Amateur Schlemmer could charge yeah two hundred thousand dollars to so you can live out your yeah. fantasy. But do what Alex did, man. Yeah. Buy a car and make your make own your Batmobile own. based on not the movies but like the comics. Yeah. Yeah. Like I would like, I would like that version of the Batmobile with the face on. I think of that as the Killing Joke Batmobile. He yeah, pulled up in in oh, that yeah. Batmobile. Yeah, with the yeah. Fa fucking face on it. Oh, yeah. that's dope, man. Yeah, and he and he and his brother just made it himself. I mean, that, and it's it. it I wish it's I was fucking cool. like manly, like good with my hands and new cars and shit. Like I'm such a fucking like, just like, hey man, you want me to make eggs for you? Like I'm, yeah. that's it. I'm yeah. not, I'm not butch like those guys. If I was. That would be such a badass hobby, like down yeah. in the shop making my own Batmobiles and shit. Yeah. Yeah. Man, yeah. you just bummed me out. Suddenly, once again, I'm like, I lose to Alex Ross. <sighs> he can fucking paint, fucking make a Batmobile. Yeah. This guy's got the world by the balls. <laughs> Secretly Superman. <laughs> um, okay, so there it is. Amateur Slammer Batmobile, man. Jump onto their website. You can check it out. And if you got yourself 200000 you can get your own Batmobile. But if you want to invest... <laughs> <laughs> in a Batmobile and have a fucking direct line there you go. to uh, Hollywood's Paul Dini. Yes. Uh, knowing that when he picks it up, it's a bat, a blinking bat phone and shit yeah. like that. And yeah. you could just like call him and make reservations for the car, but you could also just call him up and be like, what did it mean at the end of the Heart of Ice episode? Like what, do, what, what would, how do, why am I so sad? And shit like that. You can Q and A motherfucker yeah. right at his house. And I'll answer. Hello, you've reached the Wing Hao Chinese Laundry. Thank you. We're closed. <laughs> Goodbye. They're like, fuck you. I invested $50 in your dream. Oh, sorry. They moved. <laughs> <laughs> we drove off. Oh, unfortunately, we ran over the $12,000 dog. <laughs> dog <laughs> rubbing up the Batmobile. We're very sad about that. Quick, save it. How? With a gamma knife. What's yeah. it going to cost? $50,000. <laughs> God, God damn run it. it. <laughs> run it. Bring me my old dog. <laughs> Speaking of uh, heart tugging, yes, uh, 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 emotional uh, fucking uh, uh, tugging at the heartstrings, as, as we just said. Yes. Um, this week or last week, rather, on uh, YouTube, I yeah. saw and and the world saw anybody that cares, and it was a TV commercial for Arkham Origins. I guess is the game that. They're yeah. Doing. Oh yeah. The uh, the commercial was was it unbelievable. Is Unbelievable. If you've not seen the commercial, go look it up on YouTube. All you do is go YouTube and yeah. enter Arkham Origins or something like that. It was yeah. at the top of the page the other day. Yeah. Um, because it, it, it's nestled in an advertisement at the top of the most, uh, kind of geek oriented pages yeah. right now, but do yourself a favor yeah. and click on the 30 second spot yeah. that they put together. It is a spellbinding mm -hmm. dissertation. On the history uh, and pathos 
of the character mm-hmm. of Batman, and they don't really utilize Batman that much. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you haven't seen it yet, go look at it. But if you're somewhere and you're like, fuck it, here, pause this. If you haven't seen it, go watch it. Yeah. So you can experience magic for yourself. And then come back and press, uh, you know, unpause this and I'll, we'll talk about it. Now you're gone and they're back. Okay. Nobody has accomplished this a mm-hmm. level of emotion in a Batman movie yeah. yet. Yeah. Like you get close in the cartoons, especially in the Batman animated series, particularly yeah. we've met reference now three times hard advice. That was, that's yeah. an emotional fucking representation of that character, more Mr. Freeze and stuff. Yeah. This fucking 30 second spot man they could you know the arkham games are known for the yeah. action and you are batman and beating the fuck out mm-hmm. of characters and all the mm-hmm. the darker versions of the characters and yeah. the shit gone wrong in gotham and whatnot and they sell it on a very emotional uh piano lonely piano kind mm-hmm. of chords hitting and it begins with uh you know the what do they call that uncanny valley look like the it's a cg yes character um, and it looks not, not like uh, polar express creepy, but it looks almost like real. Yeah. Like, it looks human, like a kid like a, actor. Like a real kid. Yeah. And it's a kid and it's all kind of like slow mo ish. And then, um, and they each cut is the sound of a gun firing yeah. and you jump through his life. First cut you see is the young Bruce Wayne. Yeah. And it's tight on his face. It's an extreme close up, mm-hmm. smiling, looking up. As if at a parent, and you can get yeah. that you'd see bodies kind of yeah. next to him, but it's tied on him. And then you see and hear, well, you see the flash, uh-huh. and you see a bullet, an empty cartridge, entry, empty shell yeah. come through the frame, and you hear the boom of a gunshot. And you see the pearls start coming yeah. like down yeah. from the top of the frame. And you watch the little boy, it's fucking moving. I've yeah. cried this much since my fucking father died. You see the boy's expression like just change in an instant. Like, yeah. go look at this spot. Uh-huh. Pure joy for the first two, three seconds before the gunshot. Two seconds, maybe. Mm-hmm. Maybe one even. Yeah. And it's gone. Just absolutely racing. All life drains out of this little boy's face. And a lot mm-hmm. of people are like, there was no life. It's a CG character, you fucking wimpy piece yeah. of shit. Fuck you. If you don't cry at this, you're a fucking robot, man. So you watch his expression change to drop. Bruce Wayne dies in that moment. Uh-huh. And all joy and the light goes out of his fucking eyes. Yeah. And he his go the kid's face, then he he's looking up and he suddenly faces you, looking almost down the barrel. Yeah. Utterly fucking bereft. And then bang, you hear uh, the gunshot again, and they cut forward. Uh-huh. And it's a young Bruce Wayne. Mm-hmm. in uh let's say oh it's no it's it's the funerals the next yeah. shot yeah so you're tight on bruce wayne and you see umbrellas around and there's rain coming down and it's you know he's dressed up and the utter sadness of i'm alone mm-hmm. uh boy at a parent's gravesite at the funeral not making the vow or anything just mm-hmm. there at the funeral and they hold on that for a few seconds and the little boy that we begin with is gone the yeah. light in his eyes like it's just that kid hollowed out yeah then you hear the gunshot again, and they switch to, and this, I don't know why, but this one grabbed me really hard. I'm going to try to get through it without getting emotional. Yeah. They show him kind of like prep school age, like boys school age, yeah. and he's getting roughed up in a headlock, and they don't change the frame. So it's a close-up yeah. of the young Bruce watching his parents get killed, then a close-up of Bruce at the funeral, young Bruce at the funeral. Yeah. Then a close-up of this younger Bruce, like, say, 10 to 13 range. Yeah. Getting his get, put, being put in a headlock, a yeah. little bit of blood on, on his nose, if I remember correctly. Yeah, being roughed up, but his face—it's unbelievable how they're able to accomplish it with a fucking computer program. Yeah, his face is just div- just div- same grim. Yes, grim look. just like yeah. this this shit. Yeah, like they took my parents. They it never fucking ends. Like, oh, you just watch the character yeah. get built. And these are two, three second increments, these yeah. shots. Yeah. That one hit me hard. I don't know why. I was never like roughed up on a on a playground or anything like yeah. that. But that shot, I was just like, Jesus Christ. Yeah. That shot has done more to communicate like why this character impacts so many people. The kid who's just like who should have been a victim. 
uh-huh. uses that instead to be like, I won't let this happen to anybody else again. Yeah. Oh, it breaks me up inside. So anyway. Well, it's like the, the prep school years. Where was he? I mean, he wasn't going home. For Those are his Jesus play. years, dude, right? Yeah. Like they haven't really done. I mean, definitely over the course of the history of comics, they've yeah. touched on it. But I was just like, what a great yeah. story. Like, I, I mean, I'm sure people have done it. But when they showed that shot of him in like prep school, it's like, oh my God, yeah. Like he was sent away to school theoretically, and he was probably beaten up every day for, you know, you know, stupid kid with a trust fund and no parents. Let's make fun of him. And he probably got that a lot. And he probably learned, you know, a lot of lessons. You know, it's like, you know, I don't have to, you know, I'm not going to deal with this later. More of that, dude. Yeah. Like that's like, you know how they're always talking about like, we want to do fucking young Bruce Wayne or something like that. Do that. Do yeah. like him at fucking prep school, like a badass version of school ties and yeah, shit where yeah. he's like, instead of the Jewish kid getting picked on, he's yeah. the fucking, you know, the rich kid who lost his parents and he's always solving crimes and shit like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. That's the fucking that's a bad CW. One. There you go. Yeah. Man. Although, and that's something we'll add to the list and we'll talk to, we'll talk about next yeah. is the, they talk about that TV show. Gotham. I right, add that to the list. Talk I got, anyway, I got I got into that a little bit with the Hush character, Tommy Elliot. Mm -hmm. Like he always, like he was like friends with Bruce, but he hated him also. And mm -hmm. I did like a. I remember when I did House of, or Heart of Hush. There was a little bit of a flash. What was Heart of Hush? It was a mini series. Yeah, it was a mini series. They, uh Dan DiDio said, you know, we've got Hush, and we kind of want to flesh him out a little bit. So, um. There for a brief, you know, because Jeff Loeb established that Tommy Elliott and Bruce Wayne were were friends. Mm. So I went back to kind of those years where um um they uh where they hung out together and where they were pals. But the thing is that Tommy's mother was this sort of desperate social climber who always said, Bruce Wayne is the kid you want to be. You want to be like Bruce Wayne. And so she saw no value in Tommy, but kept, you know, holding up Bruce as a sterling example. And when Tommy later hears that Bruce's parents were killed. He goes, good. You know, some, some misery finally happens to the great Bruce Wayne, but he was still kind of buddies with him. Right. So it was a, it, it kind of, it was one of those stories that kind of skips around in time, you know, backwards and forwards to sort of give that little bit of, you know, resonance to, to that. But that, that would be a good place to go is like, the lonely kid in boarding school because fuck, I know that I've been there four years, dude. Like that well, boarding school generally, how long is it? Uh, in my case, it was a uh, high school. So, it so was four years of high school, four years of high school. Yeah. You go pitch a show where it's just, we should go fuck it. Why are we even talking? You and I should go pitch. Bruce Wayne goes to pub, uh, to private school. It's yeah. a four year series. Like, you yeah. know, fucking like, we our five year mission. Yeah. Yeah. We tell them like, this is it, but they might be like, we want more than that. But we're like, look, all we're saying is mm -hmm. fucking four. And then after that, think about it. If, if, if the show took off and people were like, we fucking love this. Yeah. Even when he's done with four years of prep school, mm -hmm. then you do the next four. It's just, it's like fucking Smallville. He never yeah. puts on the fucking costume, yeah. but you use all that pain and fucking see his Jesus years, yeah. the lost years between yeah. 12 and fucking 30 that also shaped him, not yeah. just the death of his parents, but like the, yeah. the never ending fucking thirst for justice training, yeah. you know, without knowing he's training yet and shit. It's like a, the Dark Knight meets Encyclopedia Brown. Oh. <laughs> there you go. Ah, you just gave me a fucking big old bat boner. Like, I would watch that fucking who show. Who wouldn't? I mean, that's a great show. And, you know, Warner Brothers is probably sitting there going, ah, thanks for the free ideas, suckers. No, no, no <laughs> we're taking it to him. Copyright fucking uh, Kevin Paul. So, there we go. And, and also, go. Uh, what's his name? Well, Bob Kane? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Credit to the guy that created the character yeah, as well. Yeah. But think about it, dude. You could do... Like, you know, Alfred's a part. Like, yeah. Alfred, he's mm -hmm. not there every episode, yeah. but he checks in regularly. Yeah. He's not there every scene, rather, but probably every episode he's checking in on. Mm -hmm. You could do stuff like, I mean, it's not, like, he's probably sent away, so it's not in Gotham. No, but it's nearby. Nearby, yeah. so maybe the you know, next state over or something like that. Mm -hmm. Um, So that you could do stuff like, uh, let me see, he's Bruce, is that a, I mean... You can get corny and do stuff like, you know, Bruce Wayne, meet your roommate, Harvey Dent. Harvey Dent. And shit like that. Tommy Elliott's down the hall, you know, like that. You could, and uh, Guest speaker in, in the economics course. We have a guest speaker, uh, Oswald Cobblepot. There you go. You know, one of the richest men in Gotham and shit like that. Uh, if you have any, 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 if you're, if you're missing home or you're crying, go to see our, our therapist, Jonathan Crane. You know, oh, just like fucking behind yes, the scene, dude. You know, yes. So he's like 25. You know, I always 
think of him as like 20 years older than bat, like older than the re- other villains. Cause you know, he's more like studious, but it's more like, so you're having nightmares, Mr. Wayne, tell me about these rats. You say, Hmm. And I have the a rat reason, right here. Yeah. The reason he, he like Bruce chose this school yeah. because it's like, they're What's that movie to skulls where they have like an underground. Fucking oh, the skull society. and bones. Yeah. Yeah. So he wants to crack this fucking thing. Yeah. And that's our myth. Oh my, we're going to be rich. That's our mythology. Yeah. Is the underlying of every episode is different and yeah. shit. Mystery of the week. Kind yeah. Of. But the underlying mythology is he's at that school, which we learned midway through fucking yeah. season one to bring, to crack this fucking specific skull and bone. So he's trying to get into it. He's undercover essentially. Yeah. Start. And this is where it begins. Like the great detective work begins. Yep. And Alfred is just like, you know, he starts figuring it out. Like right. Alfred's the one that calls him on it when he visits. He's just like, it occurs to me, Master Bruce, that you're far too interested in, in, in this organization, blah, blah, blah. And he's, yeah. what are you up to? And he's yeah. just like, don't worry about it, Alfred. And yeah. slowly over the course, by the end of season one, he's like, if you're going to do this, yeah. oh, I'm getting goosebumps, dude. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, in a world where they're doing sexy arrow and they're doing yeah. sexy flash and shit like that, this is a way to do fucking young Bruce Wayne in prep school. It and is. he spends four years trying to bring down. That's our fucking art, dude. Just right. like Homeland is all about. Yeah. Go after Abu uh, was Abu Nazir. Yeah. He's going after the skull and bones. So by the end of our fourth season, like that's our big. It culminates in you know hopefully yeah. him bringing it down. And the skull, and you know, by the end of that, like you see at the end of season one, here's our big yeah. reveal at the end of season one and shit. Like, you know, they're, they're talking about him for membership yeah. in the skull, skull and bones. Right. And he thinks he's getting closer and blah, blah, blah. And, and you know, there's also a human story. Maybe yeah. there's a girl or whatever. No, it's an all boys school, but yeah. there's some girl who works there, some daughter of some motherfucker so that he, you know, he can fucking maybe fall in love or fucking, you know, I was going to say, let's be brave and take it in the all fucking gay direction. Oh, yeah. There you go. <laughs> They'll never let us do it. So yeah. obviously there must be a girl somewhere in there. Yeah. And so, you know, we tie up the season with like a human beat where, yeah. where she's always kind of like, oh, Bruce, you got to like lighten up. Yeah, like, yeah. You're so earnest. Like, yeah. let's have fun. Like, blah, blah, blah. So she's like, you know, fighting. He's caught between the battle between his head and heart. But he, you know, yeah. he's definitely more head than heart and shit. And then our PS scene. Mm-hmm. is like in the skull and bones like fucking yeah. citadel under you know because they yeah. had like a secret chamber yeah. in that yeah. movie of skulls you know and they're talking to whoever our villain is and shit like uh-huh. who's in charge of the skull and bones because of course there's like a draco malfoy type kid yeah. who's like i hate bruce wayne yeah and then his dad who's been a member of the fucking skull and bones we just rip off everybody of course obviously. of course yeah and so, you know, at the end, he's just like, uh, they're like, do we allow, like, this Wayne is asking too many questions. Do uh-huh. we allow him in? And they're talking to a dude you don't see. Mm. And so that guy who you think is in charge of Skull and Bones is talking to his master and shit. Mm. And they're like, what should we do? And then he's just like, of course, let him in. You know, we must welcome Mr. Wayne. And he turns and it's fucking raging. Rez- oh, of course, right? Of course, of course. Oh, my God. So end of season yeah. one, they're just yeah. like, the Skull and Bones is connected to the League of Shadows. Yes, yes. Oh, and to make it a little more modern, maybe the uh, the like the symbol of the skull and bones is like they all wear owl masks to oh, get in Snyder's. To co- get in fucking the Court of Owls. The Court of Owls. Dude, there we're going to be rich. And we there bring in go. fucking, oh, think about it. This yeah. fucking show writes itself and yeah. takes care of itself. All we have to do is shepherd it. And then you just bring in the best talent across the boards. And have them write episodes and shit. Okay, you know, I practically did the show with Tower Prep. That was a show that was on Cartoon Network for five minutes. Don't We've tell them that, man. <laughs> they'll, they'll be like, fuck but you they, then. But they, ki- they kicked it off the air as fast as they could get it on. But it had the secret societies. And, you, know, you should watch some of those episodes. I remember and, the and, show. And uh, But it's like, this would be the continuation of, of Tower Prep. Or, you know, that idea of it. From the guy who brought you Tower Prep. And the well, guy who brought your clerks. <laughs> yeah, there you go. No, this would be really awesome. But I, fucking, a, I would watch that show, man. Yeah, and yeah. it's just like, and again, you know, just like in Smallville, yeah. like little cops to the world and yeah. to the future. And, ne- yeah. you know, and he never puts on the suit. Yeah. Because, you know, that don't happen till no. the bat crashes through his window in the future. But we also get to do... Say if we make it to season three, or maybe in season two we start fucking around with this. Yeah. Because season one sets up the world in the arc, and people are like, ah, yeah. shit. And we give them a little taste of everything. But season two, we start doing flash forwards. Yeah. Where he's older, but he's still not Batman. And he's we're never doing the, the lost suit. flash forward. Yeah. There you, do, you go. Now we're stealing from the best, dude. And he's not. Again, we never take it to the suit and shit. 
Uh, no. It's just, but it's like to moments like him in the chair. Yeah. Like you open episode fucking uh, season two, episode yeah. one is uh, f- blood on the f- carpet. Yeah. Uh, shadowy, massive library, high back chair, and you see his arm over it, bloodied, yeah. and then yeah. we're on him, and you see bruised up, and he's been he went at it like yeah. himself, like it was almost from uh year one, yeah. Uh, and he went out like in fucking you know a skull cap or whatever, and fucking dark clothes and a yeah. harness and shit, and just got fucked up big yeah. time bleeding and shit, and you know there's the fucking little table, and it's got the bell on. It. Yeah, there you go. And so right away, people are like, oh, my God, like yeah. they're coming back in a, with a fucking vengeance. Yeah. And then you put up like an American Horror Story, how they'll like do some kind of scene and then they'll throw up the date. So you're yeah. like, okay, that's where we are. So we throw up, you know, 20 years from now. Yeah. And it's the moment before the bat comes through the window. So yeah. it's him and you on him after you see all these shots, they're finally on his eyes yeah. and he can't keep his eyes open. He's losing consciousness and yeah. shit like that. And no dialogue, nothing, but it's, you know, yeah, everybody yeah. who knows it knows. And you tell the story enough in a way where people don't know Batman yeah, or yeah. like, what does this mean? And it's just him, whether or not he's going to go for the bell and shit like yeah, that. Yeah. And then, you know, you just hear from outside, like the f- rustling of something and yeah. then with as much energy as he can muster, he kind of looks to his right and f- flying at the b- window is a shape, a shadow you don't quite see what it is. And yeah. just as it's about to impact and you see like the fucking window start to splinter. Yeah. We come back to our present. Oh yeah. Yeah. And it's, and it's something that parallels. Yes. It. And yeah. it, it's, yes, it's him getting, it's him with some big decision to make. That's right. the theme of the episode obviously is like in that moment. Yeah. Do I pick up the bell or don't I or what? Yeah. Or do I be this guy? Is yeah. this worth it or not? And yeah. we're not saying that. We're showing it by his debilitated condition and shit like that. And in the then that's just a flash forward. But in our present, it's yeah. the same thing. Like he, young Bruce, has a choice to make. So you go from that dramatic opening uh-huh. to a flash present, and it's uh you know him facing down someone in the skull and bones yeah chamber. You know what it could be? It's like Tell he, me. he's got like in like in the skull and bones when they meet, they wear these like, you know, like the barn owl masks or something like yes. that. Yes. So you cut back from the bat flying through the window to him. paint. He's got a mask that he's taken from one of the guys and he paints it black and he puts it on. So he's the black owl. So he's the enemy of the skull and bones. And oh. they don't know that he's got the mask. Oh, my God. And, and that's our pre-credit sequence. Yeah. We're not even at the credits, no, opening credit no. yet. And what happens is during the course of the year, he gets the owls run out of the school, you know, where he gets the skull and bones. So they're they're cut off from the school. So that's the victory for that year. But next year there's something worse. That, right, all right. You know, cut the, off the head of the hydra. Something else pops up. You know, they they start experimenting with a new chemical that makes kids uh, laugh a lot. You know, or something like that. Oh my god, the origins! And then by the end of the season, they're they just start like, experimenting with this kid. No is one will up, ever give use this. Like, like it's get like rid Ritalin. Of this. You know, it's like this will cheer up the kids. You know, you give them like an advanced form of Ritalin. They test it. Yes, there's a pharmaceutical company. Yes. that tests within the school. Right. And fucking Bruce is like, what is the, something's going, like, I, I can sense yes. a taste difference, blah, blah, blah. Like, he's onto it before anybody else. And the, the school has made some sort of fucking yeah. expensive deal with a pharmaceutical company to test out a kind of more user friendly Ritalin that wouldn't require a prescription. It keeps over the kids counter. happy, though. Yes. And then the, he meets the doctor who's a real young Jackie, doctor. Jackie, shut the fuck. This is legendary. Go. <laughs> he needs. <laughs> Like, they bring in a really young doctor, like an intern. And it's like, what's your name? Just call me Dr. Happy. Yes, <laughs> you know? bitch. Yes. And, then, and they cut. And by the end of that arc, man, it's just yeah. like Bruce foils it. Yeah. And, you know, it's just like it's it's him and Alfred. Yeah. Like, put burying it or doing something with it where, like, you can't ignite it because yeah. if it's. If it, if you tried to burn it, yeah. If you pour it in the water, it, you know they make a joke where he's like, "We can't just pour it in the." Look what it's doing to the fish. Yes, <laughs> like it put, it put weird. What what would it do to the fish? So you give a nod to the laughing fish. Yeah, can't burn it because it would go airborne and yeah. shit like that. So him and Alfred like bury it mm-hmm. on an island off Gotham, like one of those little tributaries, yeah, or sandbar uh-huh. off Gotham late yeah. at night and shit. Yeah. And you see like a very wealthy boat and you know, speed boat or whatever. Yeah. And him and this younger valet mm-hmm. digging a hole and burying these barrels of fucking, or maybe it's sinking a boat or yeah. something. No, we don't want to put it into work. Yeah. 
But, you know, it's in a like way... one of those the, little islands near the Statue of Liberty, when you go on the Statue of Liberty tour, you know, like the government owns those. Yeah, but Wayne, he's just like, just like uh, I was wondering why you bought this. Yeah, you know? exactly, yeah. He was just like, this is a place nobody will ever touch. It's government yeah. protected, Alfred. Yeah. Most most importantly, it won't. we can't put it in the water for yeah. this. We can't burn it because of this. It, it won't ever fall. Putting it here won't ever fall into the wrong hands. Yeah. And then you end the episode with a flash forward. Yeah. To, you know, 20 years later and you see like, you know, this, your, the hole is dug and you're seeing dirt flying out of it. Yeah. And then the shovel comes over out of the hole. Yeah. And then, uh, you hear the giggling and you <laughs> see a hand put like, yeah. reach onto the earth to pull himself out and shit. Purple glove. Oh yeah. God, dude. I want to watch this shit. Okay. Third season. Yes. The the school goes co ed. And there's a really ballsy chick who moves into the dorm. Comes from the same background as Bruce. You're making me hard. Silver St. Cloud. Oh God. Silver St. Cloud comes on as the first girl school uh student. We gotta do her maybe that's the girl. She goes to the neighboring girl school. So we got her from season one and that's the girl interest where I thought you were oh, going yeah. season three. Yeah. Is a very athletic girl. Who like fights her way? Like you know, she's uh-huh. that girl. She's given the school so much shit in the courts and, yeah, and yeah. demanded that the state, you know, let her attend this school. Like, yeah, she's a who is it? What's her name? Selena Kyle. There you go. So she's introduced as the first, yeah, female student in the boys' school. And this is where some of the hardcore fans are like fuck you this timeline. But in a new Fifty Two world where she's not even a hooker anymore, yeah, we yeah. can do what we're doing, and we could do like the girl who. uh you know, you got Harley in there. She's there on a scholarship, poor girl on a scholarship, who's like, you know, the bad girl and stuff like that. You know, bring her in at some point. She goes to the neighboring school. She goes to the neighboring school on a scholarship or something like that. And, uh, but God, you know, when I did, uh, when I did a Heart of Hu- House of, and then the follow up to it, I'll get you those if you haven't read them. Uh, one, I did tell a story back in Bruce Wayne, in Thomas Wayne's early days before he settled down with Martha. Mm. One of his br- drinking buddies was Zatara, who I played like um, David Blaine or, you know, David Copperfield. And this and, is Zatanna's dad. Zatara, yeah, you go out and do magician. bar tricks for girls and go, oh, a magician. And then, and oh, Thomas Wayne, you've got money. And they wind up getting drunk and laid together. Right. So there were some early stories I did with Zatanna. Who I imagine is about four or five years younger than Bruce, you know, kind of being in that circle. So Tommy Elliott kind of knows her, but I would not give her powers at that point. It's more like you're 16, the witchy powers show up or something like that. But, you know, there's a whole, you can people this with everybody. Cobblepot could be there, you know, he could be like the, the, the rich kid. He could either be the older guy or you make him like, you know, like Martin from The Simpsons, you know, like the the the, the prissy kid who's uh, the mean, rich prissy kid. They can all be in there. You can, yeah, one by one, man. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's like Harvey Dent has to be kind of Bruce's age. Otherwise, Harvey Dent like, should be like his best pal. Yeah. So that makes oh, it's the God. Bruce and Harvey show. You know? Yes, like they're the the uh, f- fucking Dante and Randall. They are. That, yeah. Yes. Yeah, they are. They're roommates. They're best pals. They're you know they they really are. And it makes what's to come. Like it's not like it wouldn't. It'd be way baroque to be like it's fucking Bruce Wayne and the Joker as youngsters. No, no. And no, but it's like him and Harvey Dent, and they both. And they why they get along is like a sense of fairness, justice, yeah. and also like. Harvey was, you know, fucking, I don't like those skull. Like I, a friend of mine yeah. had a bad experience with them. If I can, yeah, if I can do like, you shouldn't even be interested in these cats. Like they wind up in a room yeah. together uh, and we do the oh, opening scene, dude is fucking them. Harvey's a kid on the scholarship. He's the poor kid. Like his parents had to, had to, had to sell everything to get him there. And Bruce has it easy. You know, they're all over him. And Harvey. That's the plot of the first episode is yeah. how they get in the rooms always, together. Yeah. Is like Bruce has a massive fucking suite of his own. Yeah. And Harvey is this, the fucking trust fund, not trust fund kid, the fucking the poor kid, pop, poor kid who's there on scholarship. And then some of the other rich kids, I don't want a fucking room with this welfare case and yeah. shit like that. Yeah. And there's a scuffle and then they frame him to yeah. fucking like get him out of the fucking school and shit like that. And he's heartbroken because he's going to lose a scholarship. And then Bruce realizes yeah. something's wrong. And so they work together yeah. to prove Bruce works with them to prove him fucking, you know, yeah. wrong. The other kid gets fucking yeah. gets suspended. And that's the Draco Malfoy type boy. Yeah. But, you know, they're like still that's Elliot, Bruce. Tommy Elliot. Hush. Tom, yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah, there you so, go. Yeah. So he's like still Bruce at the end of the day. Like, we just don't have room. Like, we filled the kid's room. And he's like, well, you know what? He can live with me. Yeah. And so Harvey moves into Bruce's. Yeah. Sweet, and he's of course he's got his own room. And shit. Yeah, 
but that's when the episode one, Mm -hmm. they start rooming together in Bruce's dorm and they're both bonded by Mm -hmm. a sense of like what's right. And they're also neither of them trust this fucking skull and bones. And that's where you start to get the feeling that that's what Bruce went to that school specifically for. Yeah. Yeah. And why, why that school, like why not, not any more. I mean, is it any deeper than, Hey man, I hear some shit's gone on or Uh is it like, do we tie it into, I mean, you can't take it as far back as Joe chill, but maybe it's, maybe it's, uh, who's the mob boss in Gotham? Uh, Falcone. Falcone. Yeah. yeah. Maybe it's Falcone's kid. Yeah. Is there. And Uh he's trying, it's all tied into him trying to fucking find out, of course. Right. Uh, who killed his parents who like we all know joe chill did it but fucking he believes that falcone fucking and there was like boss zuko and then there was like guys who 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 paid yeah i forget who it was who who paid to have the wayne up, killed up the yeah. chain yeah. so it's yeah. not enough that well number one in our world joe chill uh, you got I, was he caught or wasn't he caught he in the killed. comics he was never caught uh in in the old comics uh batman discovered who it was and he he took off his mask and said, "I'm I'm the son of the ki- man you killed. I'm Batman." Mm. And Chill was so freaked out, he ran into a room of gangsters and said, "Years ago, I killed a guy. Now that guy's kid's grown up. He's Batman." And they go, "You're responsible for Batman." And they kill him before they find out. <laughs> Conveniently, <laughs> the dumbest criminals in history. You know, it's like they show. Oh, we could have found out who Batman was. They did that on. They redid it on the uh, Brave and I Bold. I wrote that one. Did you write that? I one? wrote that one. Yeah, that was the most emotional Brave and Bold up until the end episode, where yeah. you know everything was closed down. Yeah, but it's the Brave and Bold was very wonderful show. We've yeah. talked about it before. Yeah. But uh, very uh, high camp and very, like, the fun of Batman yeah, and shit yeah. like that. But that episode was uncharacteristically right. darker, kind of like Batman animated series emotional because they went and you did that storyline. Yeah, I couldn't have Batman kill the guy, of course, and I couldn't have any of the villains kill him. But the Spectre was in it, so as he's running, Chill is running out, the building kind of collapses on him right. in Michael Fleischer type way, and like the comic books, and then... Phantom Stranger says to him, strange how the building collapsed just over Chill Inspector, played by Mark Hamill, goes, I wouldn't know anything about that. (laughs) I wanted to give it the Spectre kind of like feeding the guy into the wood chipper, you know, or, you know, bizarre death type thing. Excellent. Excellent. But this Bruce Wayne in in prep school, man, it it does. It writes itself and it it, it can be really. And you get to tie in shit. Yeah. Like there's, uh, you know, there's the, uh, the, what is it called? The statistics student, mm-hmm. Nigma. Yeah. Who I just, you keep going, dude. Maybe you don't do it like everyone in episode series in season one. Yeah. But you keep layering throughout. Well, Harvey is really interesting because. Like, oh, wait, go back to this origin. So yeah. he's there because, you know, someone, a random thug killed his parents. And right. then, like, in, I don't know whether or not Chill is caught or not or in our version, but still, it's like this guy's connected to the fucking. Zuko mob, which is connected to the Falcone mob, which is mm-hmm. that's what's killing Gotham and killed my parents. His kid is going to this prep school, right? Falcone's kid or whatever, and he's all he's been there for two years, and he's a member of this fucking Skull yeah. and Bones or Owl Society yeah. or whatever. And so that's what drives him to that school because if he can fucking get in tight with that kid, bring down that fucking Skull and Bones Society, but also fucking. You know, get closer to the guy who essentially is responsible for the death of his parents. Right, right. So it all, of course, ties in back to that. And that's what Alfred is helping him figure out. So you got Alfred on the ground, like in Buffy. He's there. Yeah. What is he called? Uh, Jarvis. Yes. No. Was that? No. Giles. Giles. Yeah. yeah. Um, So, you know, you got your adult figure who's not in every scene, but like they can hang out and come. They could uh, like uh, periodically Alfred checks in on him once a week and Bruce is sweet at the fucking, you know, the school is obviously decked out and fucking it is like Spider-Man's amazing friends. So like panels turn and shit like that. So we get a little bit of the old Adam West Batman in there, Uh but Harvey doesn't know about it. So Uh you get moments where like, oh, oh, hold on, you know, and he's fucking and his computer equipment. I mean, you don't even need that. And he would just close a, is in, in a, a modern age, you would just close a laptop. And yeah. Like, exactly, come in. Yeah. <laughs> um, but something, you know, there's yeah. an element of fucking James Bondian, uh, yeah. or superhero or super, you know, bat cavian kind of technology that has yeah. to be hidden away from Harvey. So we get a few kind of comedic beats there. He's like, 
Bruce, man, like we all do it. Don't worry about it. Like, yeah. you know, when you don't have to freak out, lock the door. Yeah. yeah, yeah right. <laughs> you know, just, just like, clean yeah. up after. Here's a sock. If if a girl's here, put a tie on the door. But if it's not a girl, just put a sock on the door. <laughs> there you go. Um, we'll throw one more geek thing at. One of the reasons he wanted to go there was, uh, you know, you can say, Al- Alfred would say, why, why else do you want to go there? And Bruce says, well, they have good athletic program. And you see him working out with this coach whose name is like, you know, Joe Smith or something. And uh, at some point, Bruce says to him, you know, I know your name is Joe Smith now, but it used to be Ted, whatever his name was. It used to be Wildcat. And he's oh. been there for, uh, you know, he was Wildcat. His his name, his his identity was never exposed. But Ted Bruce, Grant. Ted, Ted Grant. Ted Grant. But Bruce cracked it. And this guy has been working there as a coach for the last 15 years under another name. And he says, train me. And he was like the first Gotham superhero. And he's like, I'm not going to, f- I'm not, no, I'm out of that game. That's, and I'm certainly not going to bring a child into it. Thus, fuck. And, yeah. and you do a flash. Well, you can't flash forward because you never want to show him in the uniform. Yes. Yeah. You could still do a flash forward to young Dick. Yes. Um, and some without doing Batman in the outfit, you do a young Dick kind of flashback yeah. because yeah. maybe, let me see. Um, uh, in this world, Basically, it's kind of like his relationship with Ted. Yes, is the is, sets the is tone. Bruce and Dick. Yeah, training. sets the tone yeah. for adult. Yeah, and child in the war zone, like yeah. where he's like, I'm not gonna f- train a kid. You're 13. How old are you when you go to prep school? Yeah, I was 13. You're 13 years yeah. old. Am I gonna yeah. teach you to the, the stuff I know? And yeah. he's just like, I have a, I, you know, there's. He's why? Why would I do that? He's doing because I want to. I want to yeah. wage war. Why? On what? On crime. And, you know, he's just like, have you met my parents? Oh, no, you haven't. Because they're fucking dead. Bingo. Oh, they're shit. in a fucking alley. I, th- that's where I go every night with the two roses if you weren't watching. <clears throat> so he gives them this kind of shit where he's yeah. just like, so uh, the way the way I see it, Mr. Grant, you'll either train me uh-huh. or you'll be looking for a job elsewhere tomorrow. Yes. And, and dealing with some uh, 20-year-old lawsuits. So <laughs> he he's he's basically like caught between a rock and a hard place. So he's like kind of begrudgingly begins yeah. training Bruce. So he enjoys like fucking, yeah. like here, grab this pole and fucking whacking him in the head with yeah. it. He's like, I yeah. told you to grab it and yeah. shit like that. Yeah. So he can be a little more rough with him and shit, which yeah. is what he'll need yeah. 20 or 10 years, 15 years from now yeah. when he's in an alleyway. Yeah. And you could go out and get the best martial artist, you, and that that role could be played by anybody. You know, you get a, uh, you know, terrific white actor, black actor, anybody. You know, just to play, you know, the, or you know, Wildcat in his later days, and and his and his sort of and his mentor. You know, like he's got Alfred, and then he's got you know Ted. You know, sitting there at, at the school. That could be really cool. And you have on campus, yeah. Um, there's, uh, when they have houses, I mean, he would have his own, like, kind of, uh, uh, like a dorm, but still it would be in a building. He'd be a dorm master. We're talking about Ted or Bruce. 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 He'd be in a dorm. Yeah. Well, they got a lady, a house mother. Yeah. And they, she's like, uh, you can just call me Ann Harriet. (laughs) Perfect. So you get a nice little tie. So that's where she came in. Yeah. There you go. Everything gets, everything has its place. Everything has its place. It all works. It all works. Oh. Oh God! And then the new stuff is in there. The old stuff is in there, and uh, and you thread the needle, and without ever fucking having him put on the mask, without ever introducing the notion yeah. of a bat, yeah, this is all before that. This yeah. is all before he ever gets the idea. Yeah, I mean, maybe you know, if you get once or twice, like throughout the run of the show, if he's if you ever go back to Wayne Manor or something yeah. for Christmas, yeah, there's a bat in the house. Oh, yeah, I mean, get it out of here, please. Yeah, we, we got to get it out because. I can't stand bats. You know that, blah, 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 whatever. But it'll get better, better writing than that. I assure you. We got Paul Dini yeah, in our well, fucking uh, writing staff. You'll get better quality writing than that. I mean, you do the, you do the thing like it's a Halloween party, you know, and it's like, here's a Batman. I'm not wearing that damn thing. You yes. Oh. I'll take the Sherlock Holmes hat. Let me give me that. Oh my God, dude. Yeah. Um, okay. So I'm ready to watch that show. We're Jeff yeah. Johns. Yeah. We're going to pitch that show. Yeah. I'm coming. telling you. And it's like a fucking, it's an all star. Cast and crew in terms of like we pull together yeah. all the writers like Scott yeah. Snyder you write the f- I mean help you write the, the art. write write the owls uh, story you know, all of it it's yeah. like you take two episodes you take two episodes I'll take two episodes yeah. we would have fucking what, what's a standard season for twenty two episodes 
So who else do we grab? People that like were like, oh shit, I've always liked that cat stuff. Uh, um, God, we know enough writers. We know enough everybody. Writers. Grant Morrison. Grant. They're like Grant, write couple scripts, and he'd write the trippy fucking. He'd write episodes. the one where he where where you know Bruce has a stuff slipped in his coffee. And yes, out. yeah, yes, yeah, you know. where he's just like the mind expanding us. Yeah, yes. yeah there we the go. The beginning of the smile. He'll the, write the Smilex. Uh, there we uh, go. Run the yeah. pharmaceutical yeah. episode. Yeah. Oh, the one with uh, Jonathan Crane, you know, experimenting on the kids and oh, stuff like that. Shit, it. writes itself. It's a dream team. We put together the dream team and we do the Batman show without mm-hmm. Batman that every Batman fan. Written by Batman out. fans. Yes. Yeah. And no writers coming in saying, well, I don't really understand that kind of shit. And we pull from the universe. Just get the. There's no, things. like, there's almost. I mean, you know, of course, naturally, like, since it's not set in Gotham. Yeah. Um, or fucking maybe it is like, we, well, we don't it's have probably to. the same state. You know, it's like when I went to prep school, I lived in San Francisco and then I went Monterey was the next town could be in Bloodhaven, outskirts of Bloodhaven. Ooh, there you go. Ooh, your baby's all happy. Yes. He's Bloodhaven. Yeah. He's going to the Bloodhaven fucking- Academy. That's it. Oh my God. And that's it. So years later you yeah. do, you never show Batman in the suit again. Yeah. Never, never. But yeah. in one of our flash forwards. Yeah. You're in Bloodhaven yeah. with a fucking uh, young Dick Grayson. Yeah, yeah. Uh, before, the, you know, he puts on the suit or something like that. He's something. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. He's at the school yeah. speaking. Right, right. And, uh, you know, there's at the – to the kid. And so he's like, I went here. Yeah. And, you know, the guy who changed my life went here. So yeah. this is a great school. Welcome to orientation and yeah. blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And then like you see, you know, as he's speaking to the crowd in the background through yeah. the windows, and what is the, there's no night wing light or something like no, that. No, no. Um, How would know. they contact him? Or, oh, it's not fucking, we're in the age of the cell phone. I yeah, thinking, yeah, there you go. Fucking boom. He just gets a text of yeah. just like black mask yeah. spotted, you yeah. know, or black mask exclamation points across the boards. Well, that way, you know, you do it as if, Bruce's story is happening today. He's 14 years old today. So mm-hmm. he's got today's technology. So Batman's technology 20 years from now is going to be, you know, like Tony Stark, but to the, you know, the ultimate, you know, right. it's going to be 20 years in the future. So you can do a more futuristic taste of Batman when you do those tastes, the flash forwards in the future. Bloodhaven though, dude. That's Bloodhaven perfect. Academy. There that makes go. all fans fucking happy. Like, Oh my God. So you're close enough to Gotham. Yeah. Where he could, and honestly, you know, he's just like, Alfred is always like, you know, Master Bruce, you don't even have to yeah. go away. He's like, I always felt it was weird. And that's what explains why right, the fuck right. would this guy go to school so close to fucking Gotham, but he's going for a reason right. because he's trying to, and he wants to stay close to Gotham because it's tied to Zuko yeah. and Falcone and they want the kid, their yeah. kid close enough and Bloodhaven's close enough and, and also, they're using the kid yeah, and his yeah. skull and bones to recruit yep. for fucking, you know, to mob and shit like that. Well, it's like Yale is a New Haven, you know, that's close enough to New York. Or, or Rutgers is over in Jersey, and that's close enough to Manhattan. So it's like just far – it's like an hour's drive to, to get to – And Alfred's uh, always like, Gotham. you could be home educated by yeah. the – you know, in fact – Bruce, let's be honest. You're rich enough. You don't need to be educated. Yeah. You don't have to go to school at all if you don't want it. But yet you choose to go to all prep schools in the world. Mm-hmm. Bloodhaven Academy mm-hmm. in the, you know, it, gorgeous grounds, but in the middle of one of the most crime ridden cities outside of Gotham. Yeah. Like there's a, so you get Gotham yeah. without yeah. doing Gotham. Yeah. And then you do episodes where they're like, we're going to Gotham this weekend. You come in, Bruce. Yeah. And shit like that. And. And you could do whole episodes where you're just waiting for the teachers to get in on like Crane versus uh, Grant, you know, like what's going on here, Crane? And the coach comes in and he's all real pissed off. And it's like, you don't have any play. Get back to the gymnasium, that sort of thing. That it's whole got so much Harry coming. Potter to it as well. It does, yeah. <laughs> We're really, really stealing good. from the best. And, you know, you could create new villains that would like, uh, you know, introduce a guy here and then bring him into the comics, you know? and, and Yeah, just, like you, fucking you did. That's yeah, true. Yeah. All we're doing is ringing bells that have been rung, but... In the Batman animated series, you weren't, came in. Yeah, yeah like you, you know. weren't content to just be like, we'll just work with the same colors. You brought new fucking colors to the palette, so maybe you can create a fucking character here. Yeah, yeah. That goes into the same thing. You can yeah. do it again, but instead of animation, live action. Yeah. You create a character so cool that, like, we got to bring that character into the comics. Yeah. Isn't like, that weird? Like, yeah. some people would assume having a character in a movie, TV show, that's winning. But people like us were like, if they would just accept her into the continuity. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Finally, yes. my life would be validated. Yes. Yes. All right. We're fucking on to something. Okay. And Jeff is going to listen to this because I'm going to fucking email and be like, dude, you must listen. There is yeah. a fucking show here. Yeah. Yeah. But there's enough 
talent and fucking, you know, big, the big dicks of Batman. It tour. should all be fan written, you know? Yes. And, and then we, we get in like, okay, if we don't know what we're doing, or if we're being, you know, incompetent, then we get, uh, you know, a, a, a couple of like story editors. who Okay. Okay. We'll, we'll make this more TV, you know, structure, but you know, take the stories from the guys who write the comics. But it's like the philosophy of the, of the comic book movies in the beginning. They're like, we don't want them to look like they look in the comics. It looks stupid. Make them all dress in black leather and shit. Well, they now, work for us. Yeah. Now it's like people are like, we want authentic. So yeah. it won't matter what a story editor is like. You got to make it more TV. We're going, no, no, no. We're going to make it more our world, but we've done it. You worked on fucking lost. Dude. Yeah. You get a guy. You like, got the chops. Like it's, yeah. it's not like we're pigs in a poke. No, no, no. You've done some quality work here, but somebody like Damon Lindelof knows Batman backwards and forwards and speaks it fluently. Javier uh, Grio Mark's watch, you know, who did the, he Middle would Man. come on and write episodes. He too. would. Yeah. Oh man, he try and keep him away. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. you can go to Damon and be like, dude, write a couple episodes. Yeah, yeah. And all those guys, you know, they they that's the thing about now the uh the showrunners who are between I'd say thirty and fifty five is they all grew up living, breathing, eating comics. Mm -hmm. And it's not like the previous generation that has little or no, you know, who gave them up when they were kids. These are all guys died in the wool. And who, who know these characters backwards and forwards. So, and they also know TV writing, so they could come in and, you know, craft a great show about that. And, uh, it can be done. You know Should who the headmaster of the school is? Who? Dr. Professor Hugo Strange. Oh, fuck, of course. Oh, dude. Oh, oh of course. Oh, of course. Oh, God. Welcome, students. <laughs> it's just too sweet. It's and he's always conducting bizarre experiments yes. with the boys that people don't know about. He presents yeah. in one way, but then, and you know, you get to play him. Kelly Leak from Bad News Bears, who was in, who played Rorschach. Mm -hmm. Um, what's his name? His name escapes me. I'm a little stony right now, but him. Yeah. Yeah. He could be Dr. Younger, Dr. Hugo Strange, who begin, that's where his fascination with fucking like Bruce Wayne begins. Oh, I can Before see it. Before it becomes the fascination with Batman years later. I and could, then when he, you, you imagine one day he puts it all yeah. together where he's like, I had him at the sauce. <laughs> That's what you do a flash forward where yeah. it's just like, you know, you fucking see like this old bald man, you yeah. Arkham Asylum. Yeah. And then yeah. you cut inside and a bald man fucking just in a cell, just like fucking cutting himself and talking to he's himself. He's in a straight jacket. You know, he was right there. I made him. Yes, it I was made. all my fault. And I that shows the episode him. where maybe you do it end of first season or near the end of first yeah. season where that's where you find out, like, not only is the Skull and Bones up to bad shit, Professor Hugo Strange is fostering it as well, allowing yeah. it to happen. So yeah. in Bruce's mind, he's just like, if I cut off the head of the snake, he's 13. He don't realize. Right. He's like, I cut off the head of the snake. It's Hugo Strange. So finally he gets him fucking out like that's our first season storyline he's like i gotta get fucking uh, the dean the headmaster out of here and shit but that's when he finds out it goes far deeper we see mm -hmm. uh raja ghoul at the end of the episode uh, yeah. last episode and shit. yeah but the flash the the end our season one finale mm -hmm. is old bald man in jail saying i it was all my fault and then you flash the date of like 20 years and later yeah. or something like yeah. that yeah and then uh, he says, rambles a few more things, and then you slowly pull out of the cell, and oh. then you see strange, comma, H with a mm -hmm. cell number on, you know, and fucking blah, blah, blah. And then f flash to the present, and it's the beginning of the episode mm -hmm. where eventually Bruce Wayne brings Hugo Strange down. Yeah, yeah. You open the episode with a limo pulling up to the grounds of the academy. The headmaster comes out to meet, you know, like a prospective parent's. This one little kid gets out with his butler, mm -hmm. and it's strange showing Bruce around the campus. And then you have that scene with Alfred saying to him that you just said that, you know, you can go anywhere. You can be homeschooled. You don't need this. And it's like, no, I'm coming here. Uh, you know. You look I, like they're to, standing yeah. on the front lawn and, yeah. like, you know, massive gates, but just outside the well-manicured yeah. lawns and grounds, just outside the gates. Yeah. Utter fucking poverty detroit Other, yes. downtown detroit or or fucking new york in the yeah, 70s yeah. Yeah, just like go. this gorgeous enclave of education yeah. for the fucking yeah. privileged yeah in the middle of absolute fucking like there's prostitution there's fucking a dude got mugged you can almost see there's right streets look fucking bad yeah. boarded yeah. up buildings and shit yeah. and alfred's just like you could be and we could pull strings you could be in harvard at age 13 yeah, and, absolutely. And, these anywhere. things are done yes 
Um, and, and, and you just see Bruce's young Bruce's point of view and it's all the crime just outside the fucking fence. All the rich. Yeah. Right at his feet. And like just outside the fence, all those without and yeah. all the bad that can, can, needs to be stopped. And then you go close on his face and he's just like, no, no, it's here. Yeah. It's Bloodhaven. Yeah. And Hugo Strange is just like, well, I'm so glad to hear that because yeah. I feel like we have an exquisite program. Yes. One that not only builds healthy bodies, but healthy minds. <laughs> <laughs> oh dude oh and it so at the happen. end before we see yep. Ra's al Ghul that we hear his voice he's talking about like you know strange strange we find out strange was part of yes the you know the I don't know if they're called League of Shadows at that point uh-huh. or whatever but strange was part of this fucking Illuminati and mm-hmm. shit and he was just like strange was meant to be stronger than this he's set the, this this boy has set our program back years. Mm-hmm. You know, who is this? His name is Wayne. I was like, oh, the Wayne child. Mm. We'll have to keep our eye on him. And that's when he turns and you see fucking Ray Jagul. I think it's Rajagul. time for this boy school to go co-ed. Don't you agree, Talia? <laughs> ah! oh! I'll pack my bags, daddy. <laughs> oh, God, dude. There you go. Oh. But I we, want the show. But we also I said, want the show. Yeah, I want the show. <laughs> Fuck you. Take my money. I will pay to have this fucking show made, yeah, dude. Yeah. I'd watch that with my kid. Even without kids, I'd watch that fucking show. Yeah. Yeah. This could be modern day Buffy. And still, yeah. we haven't even gotten out of the fucking uh, Arkham Origins commercial. This all yeah. came yeah. from that one fucking shot. That's not of it. That's how good that commercial is. Next shot after the prep school, Bruce, is you see Bruce. It's a kind of side angle shot. They tilt the camera. And a Bruce who looks like he's high school Bruce hitting the canvas, being in a wrestling he's competition. He's got shaved head at some point. Shaved head as well. Shaved I mean, head. at the next shot, he's completely shaved. But yeah. here, he's kind of crew cut yeah, yeah. out. But a um, little stockier. And, you know, you can see yeah. he's fucking training. Everything's yeah. training. But his eyes are so sad, dude. Yeah. It's Again, it's just yeah. like the, the abuse. I, like, uh-huh. I will take the abuse over and over. How much abuse can this little boy take? He loses his parents. Uh, fucking puts him in the ground, fucking mm-hmm. beaten up at, at prep school, fucking uh, razzling. Apparently, he's uh, getting the better of him. Uh, he's getting beaten and shit. The very next shot, you see an older version, but again, same close up on him, and he's wearing a gauntlet. Yeah, like kind of like from uh, from the Nolan Batman universe, blocking against a sword coming at him, and he's yeah. shaved head and blue eyes, and you gets the impression that oh yeah. it's league of shadows era. yeah yeah so you're like is this canon fucking yeah. all that nolan stuff and then the very next and it's again it's all bing uh-huh. bing bing yeah bing just lone piano notes yeah. and the every time the shot changes poof, yeah. the shot the gunshot it kind of uh echoes it yeah and then finally we pull into a shot of batman and the cow yeah arkham style batman yeah. with a full face fitting cow yeah same size type shot. Yeah. And he takes fucking three to the goddamn face. Like, bam, bam, yeah. bam, puts him down. And it looks like it's Black Mask. Yeah. Or a guy. He's big, though. Like, Black Mask, I never thought of as big. But they, of course, make things larger. It could be a henchman, you know, with a, a mask. Could henchman. be a henchman. Yeah. Could be one of the black. And he's big dude. And he's just pounding fucking ass, man. Bap, bap, bap. Two shots, like, in the face. And then one just putting him down. And Batman lumbers backwards. Mm-hmm. And then they cut to the fucking Black Mask dude. And he's just like, ah, oh, he gives a fucking evil maniacal chuckle like, nah, nah, nah. yeah yeah and then you just see batman fucking like tense up and then go for the full like unbeaten yeah go come back at him the full swing and they fucking goes ah that's the only thing i wouldn't have won. i would have left the roar out of there yeah but d- doesn't ruin it i'm not no, fucking uh-uh. bitching but he throws the punch and then they go into slow and then they kind of freeze to the logo treatment. Yeah. And they pull this piece of this song and i got to remember what the song who's the artist it sounds is. really tragic it's uh it's I think it's called Still With Me. Yeah. Um, featuring Christina S- Soto. They've done a bunch of versions of mm-hmm. it. Like it's a they've done house versions and stuff. Mm-hmm. So but it's haunting. The one I can't find the exact version they pull from. Mm. Maybe it's a But it's her maybe. singing uh, it's all still with me. Mm-hmm. And you realize every one of those shots, you know, his whole fucking life mm-hmm. is a, a profound choice, dude. As Batman like, you know, they could have just gone fucking testosterone. Look at Batman fucking getting his ass beaten. You can beat ass as Batman and fucking Batman is cool. Mm-hmm. And instead they went with, 
there's a reason this motherfucker puts on a mask right and won't stop you could punch him in the fucking face twice Mm -hmm. and hit him on the top of his head like you cannot fucking stop him buddy he's they took his fucking parents he put his parents in the ground they beat him up in prep school. He's fucking razzled all through fucking high school and shit. He's trained with the League of the Fucking Assassins. He won't, he is unstoppable. He's the immovable force and the unstoppable object. Mm-hmm. And they, instead of fucking going like, that's so fucking metal, they go with this very haunting woman's voice singing, it's all still with me, meaning like, that's who I am. Every time I take a fucking punch in the face. Yeah. And I fucking come back and punch hard. I am the Batman because of all of this shit. Yeah. It's not just because of like the Joker. It's not just because of Joe Chill. It's yeah. if I'm not this, who will be it? Yeah. If I'm not the last stand, who's behind me? Like I'm it. Yeah. 30 second fucking commercial for a video game. I will likely not ever play. Not because I'm like, fuck games. I just, I, you know, it's. I'll fall down that rabbit hole and I'll never create anything ever again. I've written on those games, but I, I never play them because I can't. I mean, it's, it's they're lose... the ultimate ta- time vampire. Yes. Yeah. My... That's, that's Muse. Once Muse unpacks that game, yeah. you lose them for a couple, for a couple days. I mean, it used to be a couple weeks, but now these motherfuckers just like, he will fucking yeah. drink Red Bull and play the game 24 like, seven. Yeah. Literally not go yeah. to sleep for a couple hours. Do that shit where you read about Asian kids in other countries drop dead from it and shit. He'll sit there and, to play games and pound fucking Red Bull until he beats the fucking game and shit. I've, I've gotten tweets from people like, I've been up 20 hours. How do I get out of Harley's, uh, you know, the, the, the fun house? It's like, dude, I don't know. I just yeah. wrote it. I, I, I didn't write the key. Yeah. I, I, well, try A-A-B-B-A-A-C. Yeah, I, I think you go through the, uh, I think I think you go to the left at some point. I don't know. <laughs> They're like, the guy who wrote the game's best advice was go left. <laughs> it's not even a side scroller. Um <laughs> This commercial, profound. They yeah. managed to do in 30 seconds what none of those Batman features have done yet. What, you, when people, like when my wife yeah. watches, catches me watching fucking a Batman movie, yeah. she's like, grow the fuck up. Like even Quentin Tarantino recently yeah. uh, said at a film festival, somebody was just like, well, what do you, you know, what about, mm-hmm. hey, uh, Bat- uh, Ben Affleck's going to play Batman. Mm-hmm. And he said, yeah, I mean, great, good for Ben, but like, I find that character really boring. He's like, I don't think Batman is an interesting character. And, you know, online people are like, fuck him in the mouth. Like, you yeah. know, some people are like, how dare he? But yeah. it's a valid opinion to him. He's like, I don't get it, dude. Like, and my wife's the same way where she's yeah. like, I've seen you cry talking about this fucking fictional character yeah. who lives a life that's nothing like you. You've not lost anything like this yeah. character yeah. has and you identify with and you love it so much. And all I see is a guy in a rubber mask going, oh, rah, 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 rah. <laughs> So it's, in, but this it. commercial, yeah. they, what they can convey in 30 seconds is almost like something you can now whip at anyone who's ever like, why do you like this shit? And be yeah. like, this is why, yeah. this is why it means so much to me because look at that, look at that story. Look what they accomplished with simple images Yeah, um, and, you know, and some sound and shit like uh-huh. that, but they, they convey the entire history, the pathos, the reason that that character does what he does. Yeah. And it just, I don't know, it gives me such a fucking mental heart on, man. Oh, I loved it so fucking much. It's man. also a really elegant way to tell the origin story without you sitting there for 90 minutes waiting for him to put on the fucking mask. Bingo, dude. When I saw the Lone Ranger, you know, recently, and, um, you know, the first three seconds of that movie should have been bad guys doing something, you know, going to rape the farmer's daughter, doing something, you know, you know, shooting up the town. And then fucking Lone Ranger comes in and blows the guns out of their hands. And then just, you know, you know that he's the last of the Texas Rangers. You know these things. And if you don't know them, 20 minutes into the picture, you can do a little brief flashback where you can say, I wear a mask made from my slain brother's vest. You know, we were after (laughs) a bad guy. You know, it's like, uh, you know, all Rangers can't, I was the only survivor. End of origin. Right. But they all, all superhero. They've all got to tell the first story. The first, first story. night out, my first year on the job, my first week on the job. And which we all know, or else we wouldn't have come to the movie to begin with. And, you know, and that's why that, and, and the hair and, and the Lone Ranger is never confident. He's proud. He's never, he's never, he's never a hero. 
and he's he's kind of a bumbler, and they let Tondo take the and Tondo was fun in the movie. Yeah, know? he was he feeding crushed. the 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 bird the seeds and everything. Johnny Depp did a lot of really. I like the other dude too. I thought he did. A, he was like I thought. Yeah. Wow, this dude could have been. He was almost Batman in yeah. that old Justice League movie. That dude who did Babe Pig in the City was in George uh, George Miller. George Miller was yeah. going to direct this. Yeah, Justice League movie. Right before the writer strike broke out. That's right, yeah. Adam Brody was in it. Uh-huh. He was on one of our podcasts once, and he was like, dude, the script was great. They said it was like a, a Star Trek, like a J.J. Abrams Star Trek version of the Justice League. Oh, shit. Where they brought kids together and shit. Not kids, but in their 20s. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, Warner's pulled the plug on it because it was like 152 hunters right before the strike happened. They yeah. couldn't write on it anymore. There'd be no rewrites. So, boom, the whole fucking thing went away. But Army Hammer, I believe, was cast. I remember that yeah. as Batman. So yeah. when I was watching Lone Ranger, I was like, "Oh fuck, this dude! Like he got to play, yeah, the leading man behind the mask, just mm-hmm. not the one he was cast at." But he, he was he was good, but Johnny Depp crushed. He was yeah. really good. But I agree. Yeah. Like they took a long time to get to the Lone Ranger. Like uh-huh. even if you're going to tell the first year story or the first week story or whatever, yeah. you're right. Opening scene, show us the Lone Ranger. Yeah. Like don't make show us the full, what he looks like. Five years after the movie ends, like right, the yeah. full blown Lone Ranger we all know and love, and then tell me an origin story. Yeah, but uh, but it was big. I liked it though. I, I thought like that whole fucking ending sequence was astounding. Yeah, it was the yeah. train sequence. It was so. it was good, and I found myself, I I found myself enjoying it despite myself. But I just kept thinking like I just so wanted to, you know. But everyone feels the need yeah. to do origin. Yeah, and you and you look at a commercial like this, and you're like these fucking. People accomplished origin without human beings. Yeah, I know. These Montreal Games people, man. And you never need to see the origin story again. You know it instinctively. It's, it's visually fucking funny. heartbreaking. And who knows what they paid for that song? But mm. they underpaid because that was the fucking sauce and the bones and mm. some of the meat, not the skin. It was so delicious, that music. Like the fact that they went with a soft sell, the emotional sell to that character mm-hmm. and then you know they give it to you for like elegantly for you know, most of it but then they end on a fucking hardcore beat of like you know it's all like they stop that fucking piano right. playing mm-hmm. and let him get punched fucking repeatedly and mm-hmm. shit like that mm-hmm. and then they show him go batman and then boom you end on the emotion on a note again I will never play that game, but I'll buy that game just to fucking support whoever yeah. fucking thought that was a good idea because they're right. Yeah. That is a good idea. I could show that to my mother and my mother would be like, now I understand why yeah. you as a grown man fucking yeah. cry about something that doesn't exist. It's yeah. so well done. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, I, I know a lot of people like, I have the people who've done the games on uh, on the show and talk about them. I, I'm not anti-games. I love them. I just don't, I haven't played the games, but I yeah. definitely talked to people based on that spot. Sure. Alone. But we're talking to a guy. Yeah. Who played, uh, who, who wrote the games, the first two. The what first two, yeah. What were they called? Arkham Asylum and Arkham City. And now this one is the third one? Yeah. And what happened? You didn't write this one? I didn't write this one. I wasn't asked back for this one. They, they, they kind of, they kind of moved off in a different direction, Warner Brothers games. And, uh, Rocksteady is doing other projects. And so Rocksteady was the one that did the first two? Uh, Rocksteady did the first two, yeah. And they didn't do this one? No, Montreal games. I, I, I lost all connection with Warner Interactive after the second, that was two years ago. Right. It was just one of those things where I was talking to them and I said, we were doing the promotions on the second one. And I said, well, it's going to be a third one. I mean, you know, should I leave my schedule open? They said, ah, you know what? We're not sure what we're going to do, but we're probably going to go another way. And it's like, well, okay. What so, is, and I guess you can't even be like, well, this is unfair. You're like, right on. Thanks for. No, I got paid. So it was long. paid. Thanks well, for all the fish. You know, yeah. It was just. What like, it, when you say you got paid, do you earn off of the, like, do you, is it like movies where you get residuals? No, of, no. No. So no. you get paid once up front. Once up front. Fuck. You, it would be nice to have a piece of each game. It These would games be. fucking sell like. Crazy. Dude. Well, actually, they kind of came back for the third one. They just said, you know, these games are cost us a fortune to make, and we're going to have them all. There's no outsiders working on the game. We're no, we don't want outside writers working on the games anymore. We're, they're all going to be written by guys on the staff at the studios. So it was probably in an effort to keep the cost. Like rather than hire somebody, hire out to, hey, we'll get a writer. Yeah, they'll bring. They'll just do it from within the gamers who are actually developing and stuff. And that's what they told me at the time. I don't know if that's how it worked out or anything, but like I said, they weren't really sure what they were going to do. So, and I don't even know if the same people are working there now. What was the idea when they came to you for uh, the first one was called Arkham Arkham Asylum Arkham Asylum Yeah, who came to you? A Rocksteady or Warner Brothers Interactive or who was it? Well, actually, it was a guy John Knee who was working in special projects for DC. 
and they were going to do these video games and they were just starting off and they weren't sure how to do them or really how to proceed. Like they've done a lot of other Batman video games, but they all kind of were kind of basic adventure games. And even though they had a lot of the characters, they, they, they felt that they could do a little bit better than they had done before. And so they had, uh, they were talking to the studio Rocksteady in London and the guys over there, uh, knew my work. There's a really good, uh, game designer and a storyteller in his own right, Paul Crocker over there, who, who was there, he since left, who, um, you know, knows Batman back and forth, ran a comic book store in, in, in London and knew my work really well. So he said, yeah, you know, bring him in and, you know, have him work with us on the story. So I came in, met with them and uh, we go to London every, every couple of months and, you know, just sit there for a, a week and we do what we're doing now, spitballing and talking Batman. And I would go home and write and I would come up with the overall story and then we'd break down the story into chapters and, you know, bits of action and everything. And then I would write on that and, and everything. So it was very, um, you know, o- open back and forth and, you know, a way of working. And then I would get the script at the end of each month and I would go over it and I'd say, okay, I like this, this, and this. I think the dialogue's too strong here. Can we change this? You know, and, st- and do like a fine tune and then we'd record it. And it's like working on an animated feature it takes well over a year to do those suckers. And at the same time, they're animating and doing the gameplay and everything like that. Certainly, you know, I didn't, there's no way I could write everything, like every punch and move and kick and, you know, option and everything. And, but, uh, the team over there did, but it was, it was more like, you know, everything that happened, I basically saw it came in in script form of some form or another. And I went over. So that's, that's what I did on the first two at any rate. Um, and it was, so when you first time you see the game, like, and they, cause the character designs are, yeah. you know, they definitely, you know who they are, but yeah. they're definitely, uh, their own thing. They don't yeah. look like, uh, the, the DC renderings. They no. don't look like the Nolan versions. No. Uh, but it's somewhere in between. It has its own beautiful yeah. look that they carried through for the first two games. Is it carried through for the third? I think to a degree it is, but, but the th- third one is a, pre-story yeah, that, that tells takes before place. these two games. Yeah, that pl- takes place earlier in Batman's history. One thing that um, we did have on both of the games is Jim Lee did a lot of the initial character designs. So he did like his version of the of the characters, and then they would be gone over by the Rocksteady crew. And so it's like he did the initial Joker design, and then there were a couple of other artists took it in different directions. And, and I think I won't swear to it, but I think Jim had final approval over what the characters look like. So it's a, an amalgam of his style and the rock steady, uh, uh, style. And then, um, and then I, I think the, a lot of that, from what I've seen, I watched some of the cutscenes last night on, on the new game. Mm. It looks, uh, they look very similar. The Joker looks similar, although in the, um, in the Arkham City, he's, it, he's older and he's, and he's sick throughout most of the episode, but in the younger, healthier version looks like, yeah, it's the same character. Now, um, first time you see it, you're like, holy shit, man, this looks cool. Or you're yeah. just like, this is disturbing. These don't look like the Batman I know. No, from the get go, when I went back there, when I guess it was, uh, 2008, 2009, it was, uh, this stuff is magnificent looking. Just be the, even the design of Arkham itself and Arkham Island and the renderings they had done. It's, this is Batman's world and it has, and, and I think this is because the crew is English. It had an English sensibility to it. Why well, is Rocksteady is a British company? Yeah, they're they're based in London, and so there was a lot more of that the London looking brownstone to some of the buildings in Gotham. You know, the, like parts of Arkham Asylum. I remember covered in ivy, so it looked a little bit like like an old hospital or a university or something. Mm-hmm. It wasn't a sterile Gotham. It wasn't like seventies Gotham or you know like Neil Adams Gotham or something. It, it looked kind of European in, 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 in a way, which I think is really good. Cause I always think of Gotham as being, you know, kind of heavily European influenced and everything shadowy and Gothic and more like Boston than New York in some ways. When a game comes out that you wrote, yeah, will you like, you know, because they've, I've seen artwork for it. Yeah. Like I remember when the f- second game was coming out, San Diego, they were releasing these gorgeous fucking images. Yeah. Like, and there was like the first time the penguin or something like that, like they were showing a shit they hadn't shown. Mm-hmm before will you frame a poster and be like yeah that's fucking i worked on that yeah i mean I, there were some images i printed out and had up in my office for months oh, man, they're it's... just so terrific and so many good ideas like uh 
of the way of the ways of, of rendering the characters and the design and, and everything. And Batman, the way he's almost like screwed into that costume, you know, you can see yeah. the rivets on the side of him. It's uh, it's if you haven't. So Paul did those first two games. The third one is about to come out this week or something like yeah, that. Yeah, it just came out the other day. Did it? It's already yeah. out. Yeah. So it's uh, selling. I mean, like fucking crazy. Yeah. People absolutely adore that world. So I assume they'll keep going with that yeah. series as well. Yeah, I think the Arkham series has become a brand, you know, it, it's a definite brand. With its own look yeah. and yeah, and you know what you're getting. Yeah, it's, it's weird. They're for, there are a bunch of kids whose Batman is the, the Arkham. Arkham Batman. And yeah. you know, if you're like, Hey, do you ever read the comic? We're like, well, the comic book. Yeah. Are you crazy? Yeah. Like, and they take the comic and they're pressing it going, A, A, B, B, A, C, C. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah. nothing's happening. Yeah. <laughs> Um, okay, so bigger. whether or not you play games or not, though, seek out, do yourself a favor. If you're a Batman fan, mm -hmm. you have to. Uh, in fact, it's not even a favor. As a Batman fan, you, ha your you only must. assignment is you have to go watch that Arkham uh, Origins 30 second commercial. So worth your time. Mm -hmm. So artfully done. So inspiring that we got a whole episode alone. Yeah. Out of fucking prep school, Bruce Wayne. Bruce yeah. Wayne fucking, uh, we still need to come up with a name for it. Um, I like Bloodhaven Academy, but uh, or, or it's not sexy. Nah, it's not. Um, Before the bat. I mean, that's what the network would say. Yeah, but it's just like you know that is. Uh, I mean, and young Bruce Wayne is not. It's way too on yeah. the nose. Um. God, what do they call Arrow? They call Arrow. Mm -hmm. Um, Smallville. They call Smallville. Because it's set in Smallville, so but that's the thing. We call it Bloodhaven. It's set in Bloodhaven, but it doesn't. Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess you could. You can technically call it Bloodhaven Academy, but that's kind of a it doesn't mouthful. really sell Batman. Yeah, know? and it doesn't roll off the tongue either. And you know, every you'd be fighting right up until air date. They'll like call it maybe call it Shadow of the Bat. Yeah, there you go. There it is. It's that fucking simple. Perfect. And that I can live with because I'm like, all right, there was a comic book called Shadow of the Bat. Shadow fucking, of the Bat. We're getting together, man. We're going to fucking get up with Jeff John's butt at face and be like, come on, dude. Let's go pitch this to CW. I know there have been a few incarnations of a potential young Bruce Wayne series. Right. They tried to spin one off of Smallville, but mm -hmm. I think your creds, my creds, comp, current comic book world creds, we bring in Snyder, bring in Grant Morrison, create yeah. a fucking dream team yeah. of bat fans writing this fucking show. Have the, Neil Gaiman write a couple of those. He's been off writing Doctor Who episodes. I, I just, I'm sorry. I just, I, I almost dropped the microphone as if I said something brilliant. <laughs> You're absolutely right. Neil could fucking write episodes. Neil could write the shit out of this. And show. again, this is the Batman show. Mm -hmm. In which you'll never see a batarang. Right. You'll never see the utility belt. You'll see the origins. Yeah. Like, you know, maybe fucking he goes out and he's, you know, fucking, I, I need more pockets or something. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you never, it, no cape, no cow. That's our yeah. fucking ad. No yeah. cape, no, no cow, cow, all justice. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Shadow of the bat. Shadow of the bat. Um, I, that's a project worth pitching. I'm going to hammer that, man. I'm, I'm working on this walrus picture right now, Tusk. And yeah. that came from sitting around on a podcast going like, yeah. imagine if, imagine if we're going to start pushing this one, man. This is a whimsy worth fucking yeah. chasing for him. Yeah. Sake. This is like telling the guys at Warner Brothers, you know, there's a pot of gold buried in your backyard. All you have to do is just give us some shovels. Give them, let us dig it up for you. Yeah, you can kick back on. and you can have all the money. We just want the pot. And I mean, <laughs> when I say pot, you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, we didn't go down through our list, but the good thing about Paul Dini is he's always welcome back to the back we cave. We didn't discuss back cave, And he's coming back next episode. Okay. So what we'll do is we'll kill it there, and then we'll come okay. back to talk about all the rest of it, man, yeah. uh, next episode uh, of uh, Fat Man on Batman. Uh, thank you for being here, Paul Oh, Dini. it was my pleasure. Give it up, man. But he'll be here right. part two next week. Same fat time, same fat channel, smodcast.com. Welcome to Fat Man. I'm Batman. I'm Kevin Smith. Okay, man. It's episode 52. We're here in the Fat Cave once again with Mr. Paul Dini. Say hello, sir. Hello, sir. If you didn't listen to last week's episode, boy, you missed an orgy of fucking bat fan thick <laughs> slash thick. I mean, yeah. we were one step away from, and then Bruce and Harvey kiss. <laughs> As me and Paul built our fantasy fucking uh, uh, bat, young Bruce Wayne show, Shadow of the Bat. Harvey took me in his strong arms. One, <laughs> one side of his hand le going toward my darker recesses. I was curious. <laughs> it was the winter. You know, I didn't 
didn't want, I had no parents to go home to. Harvey didn't want to go back to his. We were watching. What were they watching? Um, what's sexy enough to make two dudes start making out? What on Christmas? <laughs> One thing led to another. I, I never drank after that ever again. <laughs> Uh, that's how we're going to lose this fucking show. They're like, we heard your second idea. You're yeah. trying to make it dirty. <laughs> no, the idea for the show was straight up fucking genius, man. And we're, yeah. we're going to go in and fucking get Jeff Johns on board and go pitch that shit, yeah. man. Yeah. This would absolutely work on CW. It's a it pretty would. boy show. It's yeah. all boys. Yeah. And you take kids who are that Harry Potter age and do it and leave it to us to develop the show. We will write the show gladly for the, you know, the first couple of seasons. We could parcel this up among six, seven writers, they could do it out of their homes. We wouldn't even need a room, really. Right. And uh, and just have it done. Somebody like Dave Mandel could get in on this, too. I mean, you know, he's more In a world comedy. where they're doing a, a shield, yeah. why not this? Yeah. And this is probably less expensive than shield. What, you build your one fucking main set Yeah. You know, the of the, of the campus yeah. or whatever the fuck. And, I mean, his dorm and shit. You shoot it in Vancouver. We shot it at the University of British Columbia up there. And it was uh, from we did Tower Prep, and it's perfect. It's in the woods. It's spooky. You do it. Or else it's, it's actually cheap enough you could do it here. I know, right? Yeah. Because it's just fucking kids. Yeah. And, you know, you get a bunch of different looks at it. Well, all palm trees out here. Yeah. But still, you Because, oh. again, it's like, look, we'll give you cheesecake. Just yeah. let us write some cool shit. They're yeah. doing, you know, their variation of it on Arrow. You know, I know you haven't revealed who Anamanapia is, but you put him in the school, make him a teacher there. You know, he's like the music teacher. Or he's got some connection to the school. And then you retcon it back that way so that years later he puts on it the all mask. works. It in. all works. Oh, my God. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, but that was the last episode. Paul Dini, of course, everybody knows who Paul Dini is, creator of Harley Quinn. Uh, Emmy winning, uh, writer. Uh, he's done, uh, the Arkham Asylum games. He's done, uh, the, uh, Batman, the animated series. Currently he's working on Hulk and the Agents of Smash. Mm -hmm. He worked on Lost. He's, he's got a fucking, uh, dick like you read about when it comes to shit he's done. Going all the way back to fat fucking Albert. Fat fucking Albert. So, uh, go look him up on <laughs> IMDb. You would fucking, he'd be so shocked on how many things he's touched. He's like the Forrest Gump of, Fucking pop culture. He's been there I'm every there. step of the way. He worked on the Ewoks cartoon. I did. Yeah, yeah. So um, in any event, what we wanted to do last episode was get into a bunch of bat topics, um, but we got into like two yeah. and then fell down the rabbit hole of one and, <laughs> and turned into some fun shit. But uh, there's still some more shit to talk about. So how much money have we made on table. our Kickstarter? I think <laughs> we're up to people. about 12 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> They're like if you could pay 12k to fix a dog buy your own fucking car yeah there you go <laughs> better yet get a scooter you jerk <laughs> i'd even take that man people were like we built you this scooter with a sidecar yeah i would take it that'd be fantastic <laughs> oh the bat rascal i'd drive that around Put the big fucking the bat rascal <laughs> i'm headed for that for sure um, okay, so last week we talked about the Hamature Slamature Batmobile, which you can get for 200K. Yeah. Uh, the, you know, Bill Dozier or Adam West Batmobile. Yeah. We talked about the amazing Arkham Origins, uh, commercial, yeah. 30 second spot for the Arkham Origins best game. Best origin of Batman ever. Oh, best origin of Batman. Ever. Beautifully done without a, any human yeah. beings. Yeah. yeah. As far as I know, maybe they yeah. motion capture from people. I don't know. Mm. But, oh, it's so fucking good. That little boy who plays Batman all throughout his life, that little computer boy. Yeah. <laughs> Best Batman actor ever. Yeah. Like when yeah. you really look back at, over the course of uh, the people who've played Batman, I'm not going to say the future Batman. No. But for all those who play Batman, that little computer boy did it best. Yes, he did. Most emotion. Mm -hmm. I got it. You know, it was fucking perfect. There was no, you want to get nuts? Come on, let's get nuts. Yeah, like that yeah, boy yeah. was real. Yeah. Even yeah. though he wasn't real. Yeah. Um, it's like that fucking movie, the Spike Jones movie that's coming up called Her. He falls in love with his, the voice of his computer. Or oh, really? Like wow. I, I fell in love with this little boy, not in a creepy fucking, you know, uh, uh -huh. priesty kind of way. I fell in love with him and I'm like, this kid can fucking act. And I yeah. keep reminding myself, that kid ain't a kid. No. He's a little He's computer like, program. Dick, 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 but that's computer. the future, man. Soon yeah. we won't need actors, just fucking digital puppets. Mm. And if they act as good as this kid in the Batman or Arkham Origins commercial, we're mm. fine. Yeah. Um, okay, so that's what we talked about this week. This uh, last week, this week, we're gonna jump into a couple more topics, all Batman oriented, naturally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and uh, Paul's area of expertise allows us to d talk about this stuff um, in depth. Now, we were 
talking about our dream show or we didn't we just started building it and fell yeah. in love with it and shit like that. Like two prep school boys who just start funneling each other. We fell in love with the idea <laughs> as we sat here, talked ourselves into it. Um, but there is a Gotham, a Batman related show called Gotham, which they just announced yes. a week ago, two weeks ago. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Fox yeah. is doing, it, yeah, I believe. Yeah. And it's focused on, uh, uh, Jim Gordon, Jim Gordon, like the young, young days of Jim Gordon coming to Gotham for the first time. And their whole thing is like, you'll never see Batman. It's all yeah. pre Batman. Yeah. So it's just life in Gotham, you know, Jim Gordon, the cop and building mm. the world before Batman gets there or something like right, that. Right. Right. Treating him, I guess, maybe like the shark in Jaws where you get few glimpses of the real Bruce Wayne or whatever. Maybe yeah. this is where Bruce is overseas training or something like that. Could be. So they've announced uh, that a lot of people, of course, were just like, get Brian Cranston because he played uh, uh, Jim Gordon in the Batman Year One yeah, animated uh -huh. flick and, and because he's done with Breaking Bad. But I can't imagine that after doing something like Breaking Bad, he's like, yeah, I'll play Jim Gordon in the Fox Gotham TV show. So I don't know who they'll get, but somebody I'm sure they'll do something cool. I'll tell you right now, though, it ain't ever going to be as hot mm -hmm. and boylicious <laughs> as fucking our Shadow of the Bat. <laughs> Ours is like, you know, you can yeah. sell ours to a sexy generation. The same yeah. kids that are tuning in to watch Arrow, the yeah. Naked Arrow show. Because yeah. every time I see a billboard for that show, yeah. it's that dude with no shirt on. Yeah. You could do the same fucking thing. The boylicious version of Batman. And we'll keep it tasteful, folks. Yeah. Don't worry. The fans out there are going, don't make it boylicious. Yeah. Make it batlicious. Yeah. Dude, we'll make it both. Like, the boylicious will keep the fucking suits at bay. Right. But you got two serious Batman fans. Motherfuckers, first two dudes who did the very first episode a fat man on Batman. Yeah. We you got go. your back. We're going to make yeah. sure it's fucking it, that every fan can hold their head up and be like, holy shit. It yeah. may be boylicious, but it's fucking fanlicious as yeah. well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but this uh, Gotham thing, what yeah. do you think? All good, right? Anytime uh, anybody's yeah. fucking making a Batman anything, we're uh, all for it. I think it's I think it's really great. Even though it's not Gotham Central, I mean, I think that some That's of the... kind of what it sounded like. It, it, it does. It's Whose series? That was Greg Rucka and... and, um, and uh, um, I know it was Rucka and oh, uh, Brubaker, Ed Brubaker, Ed Brubaker. Yeah, yeah. And um, it's a great series that that went back. Uh, I think we're going back ten years at this point. Yeah, I think now. so. Yeah. And the idea was kind of like this: like Batman was. It took place in the current Gotham. Right. Batman wasn't in every episode, every issue. Mm -hmm. Sometimes he'd be in a panel or two, but mm -hmm. it was more about the world of uh of gotham mm -hmm. uh, of the people in the department and shit mm -hmm. like that joker showed up for a run in the book you know yeah they, yeah they're all in the background you know but it's like the day-to-day -day of the of the cops who go out and have to deal with this and it's a great book and it looked great they yeah. they didn't you know who was the guy that drew the book in the beginning it's yeah. very like uh, Ed, uh not, uh, what's his name it reminded you of batman year one yeah oh uh david mazzicelli look like, mazzicelli is very yeah. like straightforward not like you know look at this fucking cape as the whole panel and shit yeah. like that people look like people and, yeah um beautiful stories real yeah. human and shit renee a lot of renee montoya stuff yeah. crispus mm -hmm. was the name christian or crispus crispus uh oh i want to say crispus addicts but i think that's a historical figure mm. um but I do know the guy who became the Spectre. The Spectre, eventually. spoilers. Yeah. Eventually yeah, yeah. He becomes yeah. the Spectre. Crispus Allen, wasn't it? That's it. Crispus yeah, Allen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and of course, Jim Gordon and stuff yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. So it sounds kind of like that's what this series is. They're not calling it Gotham Central, although that'd be amazing, and maybe they will. Yeah. Right now, they're just the working title seems to be Gotham. But yeah. as a Bat fan, mm -hmm. yay, all for it. Man. Yeah. And I think they're going to get into some of the backstories of some of the villains. So maybe some, you know, showing how people turn to crime or something like that, you know. So I don't know. I don't, I don't I'm know. treading too close to our fucking show now. Ooh, yeah, I guess so. Uh, I don't <laughs> we know. don't even have a show. No. <laughs> but it's our idea. We pitched it. But here's the beautiful thing, man. We yeah. were talking about it uh, right before we started recording. Yeah. In the world of Batman... There are so many brands within the brand of yeah. Batman. Like, yeah. of course, there's the Batman over brand, but you've got the Arkham Batman from the video games. Yeah. You've got the comic book Batmans from uh -huh. DC. You've got the Chris Nolan Batman from the movies, uh -huh. the Tim Burton Batman from the other movies. You've got the animated series Batman, which we'll talk about a little bit. The new one, Beware the Batman, yeah. or Batman the Animated Series from back in the day. There's so many different brands of the Bat within the Bat that... You could have a Gotham show. Mm -hmm. You can have ba uh, Batfleck in uh -huh. fucking Batman versus Superman. And you could have, I'm um, wedging us in there, uh -huh. Shadow of the Bat and still like not step on each other's toes. We're not in that world anymore. We're, they, it used to be everyone's like, oh, no, no, mm -hmm. fucking don't go near the crown jewels. 
But now they're like, nah, man, there's a bunch of different ways we can tap this fucking, uh, this gold, man. And this is just one possible fucking way. I mean, you know, when we did uh, the Superman animated series after that for a few years, then we did a crypto animated series, which was all yeah, the fun. Yeah, that's animal right. World. And we had Bat Hound fighting the Joker's hyenas. And occasionally you'd see the Joker, you know, drive by in a car or something. But basically it was like, Okay, another battle between Bat Hound and the Hyenas. Where do they air? Where is it cart- uh, Cartoon Network? Cartoon Network, yeah. And are they full episodes or shorts? Or There were two. It was like SpongeBob, two 11 minutes and a half hour, you know, oh, that sort awesome. of stuff. And it was Crypto and Bat Hound teamed up, you know, through a, and Bat Hound was like a regular character on the show. And was he like, Ugh. He was like, yes, no. It's like, well, my partner and I, Batman. Don't you mean owner? No, he's my partner. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. Partner in a, you know, Partner way, not the other way. <laughs> and, uh, Which is totally legal now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, but he, maybe not between man and animal, but <laughs> man and man. They're working on it. Uh, but anyway, uh, who knows? I, I, I just no. It was fun. It was, uh, it, it was fun doing that. And and occasionally we had Superman in the show. You know, we didn't. We didn't, I don't think we ever put Batman in the show. Like a we, flyby kind of thing. Yeah, he was in the first episode. You know, it's like, hey, it's my old dog from Krypton, and we had them. You know meet again and every we it was an episode with superman and then he what is the crypto origin i know we're batman centric but what is it like crypto is kind of from the silver age yeah from the silver age it was like he was like whatever the lakia or lakia or whatever it was the dog that uh he was jor-el shot a dog into space to make sure that baby Kal-El oh like the, the russian threat. dog like yeah. laka yeah, or yeah, that, laika that yeah. they shot into space yeah and what happened was um, is that really the origin? That's really the origin. That's actually kind of smart. You can still get away with that in the current Man of Steel. Yeah, you could. You know, it's like they had a canine type animal on Krypton and he shot it into space. Okay, Krypto's up there doing well. What mother wouldn't be like, before you shoot my baby into space, yeah. you better shoot your fucking dog into space and make sure it's safe. And he's like, all I, right, maybe I fucking will. And Krypto's like, this ain't working out for me. No, I spent $12,000 on that guy. <laughs> I'm not shooting him into space. You are. Okay. Get a, I'll put a fucking you under the gamma knife before I shoot this fucking billion dollar dog into space. It's not a billion, jor It's 12K. It was a lot of money, Lar. I'm a scientist. And I don't make that much. <laughs> but I love him. That's my point. The Lara goes, get the snossages and threw them in the rocket ship. She blasts them off. <laughs> Kicks the fucking lever. Okay. Dog's not dead yet. Send the baby up. <laughs> you fucking bitch. Crypto! <laughs> it was a year before yeah. they could have some sex again. <laughs> Where he wasn't like, every time I try to fuck you, I see Crypto screaming in space. But what he doesn't know, yeah. she unwittingly fucking saves Crypto's life. Like, yeah. as much as he loves Crypto, yeah. Yeah. Crypto gets to live. Yeah. Like, so as Crypto, uh, Krypton's destroying... They've had a fight for a year long. Yeah. Jurel and fucking and uh and, and Lara because uh. he shot the dog into space a year ahead before the the kid. Uh. Krypton as Krypton's exploding. Yeah. He's finally like, you know, fucking A, I was right. Yeah. So fuck everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. Yeah. But B, uh-huh. you were right uh-huh. to launch crypto off the planet because now my dog has a shot. Like yeah. crypto would have died here with yeah. us. Yeah. And she's like, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> just because we're dying yeah. but you're trying to get blown right yeah. before the planet ends that's why i'm suddenly right go to hell jor <laughs> and that's our dying words yeah yeah that's how krypton exploded that's why they don't give us tv shows and movies to fucking run because like you know i don't think that version's gonna sell like you're out of your fucking mind that's the realistic version of the death version. of laura and jor el yep yep um, and in a world where in Man of Steel, they were like, well, they didn't die together anymore. Yeah. So anyway, going back to the books. Yeah. Crypto was shot into space to see if this fucking technology was safe. Yeah. And never came back to Krypton. I don't know if the or it was of- like, like, I guess when they write this in that era, yeah. you're like, who gives a fuck what happens to a space dog? Yeah. I, I think that was it. I think it was like, he went up. Okay. He's doing okay. Oh shit. The plant's going to blow up now. Get the baby in the spaceship. We can, I can't build another one. We'll get him off in the second space, the second model. He goes up, planet blows up. Crypto's knocked into orbit or I don't know, suspended animation or something. Kal-El makes it to earth. And when he's Superboy, the rocket finally lands and hey, a dog from Krypton. Oh, and he's named Crypto and he's mine. Hey, what a coincidence. So this is how far after his landing does the rocket land? 
Uh, it happened when he was Superboy in the in the Silver Age. So he's like, so he's 14, already grown 15. up for a little while. Yeah, yeah, what a miraculous fuck! Like, what are the chances? Yeah, he's like, this fucking dog could have landed anywhere, man. He landed right on Earth. So now I've got a super dog that yeah. I can fucking like. I don't Hang know. <laughs> yeah, I could swing him by his tail. I guess. Yeah, like what are the benefits of having a super dog? Now he's in charge. This yeah. dog will be the overlord of Earth. Yeah, <laughs> he's unstoppable. Yeah. Unless there's a fire hydrant. Yeah. I, I did a I did a short cartoon for like a comic for Bizarro Comics that had crypto flying in space and he's flying fast and he's on a mission and he's flying and he's there the galactic empire is falling and everything. Gets to a planet, he finds this big orange disc and he pulls it out and he flies back to Earth with it, drops it to Superman's feet and goes, Good boy. <laughs> that's what they're that's what they do you know it's like uh that's adorable but a kid and a dog you know that back then the comic book industry was run by business guys who wanted to appeal miraculously to little kids Mm. and they thought 12 13 you know 8 to 12 year old boy has a dog superman should have a dog wouldn't it be nice if he had a dog when he was a kid i loved it there was a model kit they had a super boy and it was him and fucking crypto fighting a dragon and i love that model (laughs) kit You never oh saw God. that model kit? Of I'm just Superboy? stoned enough for that impact in the right place. <laughs> it sounds like a 70s album cover, dude. <laughs> yeah, what? You're like Superboy Crypto or Fighting Dragon. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's the best. It's the best. It's like, he's like pushing this thing <clears throat> over on a dragon. This dragon's going like, eh. And it's kind of like, I want to play some Led Zeppelin. And there you, you go. Sell, tell me that story. And then they fought the dragon. <laughs> <laughs> and Crypto bit his throat. Woof, woof. Huh? Um, all right. So back to fucking Batman. Dude. Yeah, all right. Uh, we're all for the idea of a uh, Gotham uh, TV show. Don't yeah. know when it's happening and whatnot. Sounds like it's going to pilot. Mm. Good news is that everyone's tapping comic books now yeah you know uh, the success of uh smallville for over the course of 10 years mm-hmm. uh kept the fires burning when comic book movies were dead at one mm-hmm. point arrow uh, arrow now yeah. has done very yeah. well so we're hearing about yeah. hey, we're doing flash and we're doing this and yeah. so uh-huh. it, it's viable and they yeah. found you know and the thing about arrow is they find a way to do it without even calling them green arrow and it's mm-hmm. kind of year one and shit like that mm-hmm but if I may pitch one more time for Shadow of the Bat. Shadow of the Bat. Ours <laughs> allows us to tread on no movie toes, nothing like that. It's yeah. just early Bruce Wayne, a period that nobody's ever done. But when you hear about it, you go, oh, you do the face palm and go, of course, that's yeah. what he was doing yes. when he was 13. Because he, he couldn't go to Europe, you know, when he was 13 to 18, you know, he's a kid. To, he's f- to, tra- to fight ninjas or yeah. fucking, you know, find himself a yeah. train with the League of Shadows yeah. or, or under Henry Ducard. Or, yeah. So forth and so on. Yeah, he was in fucking school. He's like, if I have to go to school, I'm going to find the parent, my parents' killers. Yeah. And so that's why he's in the academy. Listen to us. We, we know the show is smart. Yeah, yeah. We just have to sell to others. Okay, but Gotham, the idea of Gotham, good, good. idea. However, if you like the idea of a TV show called Gotham about the Gotham PD, do yourself a great favor and go read Gotham Central. Man, Gotham that was a Central. great fucking book. And I got to get those two dudes on the show. I've seen, I've t- flirted with Brubaker on Twitter. Yeah. Um, I just don't know if he lives out here or not. He lives about a block from me over in Burbank, but I, I think he also splits. Par- I think he moved up to Oregon or someplace, or he lives part time down here and part time there. Uh, I run into him at the market all the time over at Pavilions in Burbank. Next time I see him, I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll give him my number and shit, and tell him when he's in town or when he knows he's gonna be in town, like to okay. come over. And oh, I, I got his, I got his email address. I got, um, I gotta I'll go through your file effects, dude. And you're fucking you're like file effects. You can go back in time and go through my address. I gotta go through your phone, okay, and pull all your fucking bat contacts. Oh, I'll do it. I'll send like you mentioned weekend. last episode, Alan Burnett, and I'm like, we still gotta get fucking Alan Burnett. Oh fuck, I forgot that. That didn't happen. All right, well, I'll drag him. We over could do it. Remember, we wanted to do it last year for Christmas, so maybe. We'll do it this year for Christmas instead. Great. I'm um, going to Detroit with him to do a thing on animation in a couple of weeks. Really? Yeah, the Detroit Institute of Art. My sister's a curator there, so she's doing an animation thing. So we're doing it. So you get to go out and guest speak. Yeah. When is that? Give a date. Uh, the 15th, uh, 16th of, of November. November. Of so November. November 16th, if you're in the Detroit area, man. Yeah, the you, DAIA. You, the, know. you can go see, uh, what is it? What's it called? Uh, it's called, uh, uh, watch me move. It's a, it's a, it's an exhibit on animation and Alan Burnett and I are going to do a lecture on superheroes that night. So oh. we're still working about working out what we're going to show and what we're going to do and stuff nice. like that. Motor- Chances are we'll just do our comic con usual panel, you know, ask us some questions. Get out there, Motor City. Yeah. Um, okay. So speaking of, uh, TV, Gotham, the yeah. t- potential TV show, 
<coughs> there is a fucking TV show that's happening right now. Mm-hmm. Animation currently uh, being made of uh, a Batman character, the mm-hmm. Batman character. Yeah. Uh, this iteration, the first, you know, uh, what would you call it? CG or CG Batman? Yeah. CG Batman beyond like the opening credits of yeah. the Justice League cartoon. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Beware the Batman. Yeah. Uh, it started, uh, basically, uh, I think I, uh, I was on a panel, uh, back at San Diego, not last year, but the year before. And, uh, they showed the opening. Was that with Bruce Tim or, or was, uh, it was the year I spoke with Bruce Tim, but then I did a panel for DC oh, where, okay, sure, animation, yeah. uh-huh. DC animation. And they showed <clears throat> the opening mm-hmm. credit sequence one. So they talked about how we're going to use the Alfred mm-hmm. from the Jeff Johns earth. Earth One. Earth One book where mm-hmm. Alfred's not like, you know, the teetotaling, uh, show the right this way. Sir. Mm-hmm. Instead, he's more former, uh, S, what do they call that? Uh, what is it? The MI5? MI5, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's former fucking high level spy. He's like mm-hmm. older James Bond and shit, but also got the Cockney accent and he's like, uh, you know, he's tough ass. Tough guy with a gun, yeah. And in, uh, in Beware the Batman, they take it one step further. He's fucking barrel chested. He's taller than Bruce. Yeah. So he's, he's, yes, he's his butler, but it's early in Bruce's career. And this guy is fucking built yeah. like a tank, yet hard to quit. Ice tea yeah. and he's in cool, uh-huh. easy, cold running shit, man. He's yeah. built like, he's fucking huge. Mm-hmm. So, and he doesn't talk like this way. So he's just like, we'll take him on, Bruce. Mm-hmm. You know, very fucking hardcore. Mm-hmm. So he, uh, so they, when they talked about it at first, uh, and you know, and also they sh- showed that Alfred wielding a, a gun, I believe, in mm-hmm. like in some of the early artwork or something, yeah. as he did in the Earth One stuff. Some fans were like, "This is horse shit. Fucking Batman would never allow for it." Blah blah blah. Mm-hmm. So when the series finally debuted, stop it. We're, uh, it was the episode begins with uh, Pig and Frog. Right. Uh-huh. Characters that uh, I think Grant Morrison. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Professor created. Pig and Mr. Toad. Professor yeah. Pig and Mr. Toad. Yeah. I'm like, Pig and Frog. <laughs> Professor Pig and Mr. Toad. The idea behind this show is they were like, we don't want to do the Joker, the fucking Riddler. Right. Or we don't want to do the same characters. <clears throat> so they're pulling villains. Right. That you're not as familiar with or right. never heard of before, like Professor Pig and it, Toad. Yeah. Um, Magpie. Remember Magpie from like the. John Byrne? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. She was in an episode. Yeah. Anarchy. Right. I know. From Anarchy. the Norm Breifogel uh-huh. stuff, but, uh, but not straight. It doesn't seem like he's the teenage version, uh-uh. but a variation of Anarchy. Right. Um, Tobias Whale is a character. I guess that's from Grant's stuff, I think. I'm not, I'm sure he's a. I uh, think so. Uh, under uh, underworld heavy. Yeah. Um now they've done stuff like Hump Humpty Dumpty. Right. And Katana is in the show in the show as is kind of like his Robin or Batgirl. Instead you know? of having a Robin, they give yeah. him the girl and Katana yeah. is a character that goes back to Batman and the Outsiders. Right, right. She's sword wielding, Katana sword wielding, uh-huh. uh swordstress, amongst right. other things. Yeah. But that's it. Like she didn't have superpowers, she just had a fucking sword. Uh no, I, I used her briefly in um when I when I wrote Streets of Gotham. Yeah, that was during the period where Batman was was dead for a while, or or, or something. And uh, in Streets of Gotham, we had um, Tommy Elliot made himself look like Bruce Wayne. So um, Dick Grayson and Tim Drake and Alfred were like releasing him from jail to be, you know, photographed as Bruce Wayne to keep the idea that Bruce Wayne was alive. Right. And Katana was sort of with them as a bodyguard, you know, like. She, officially, she was like she worked at Wayne Industry, Industries, but she always had the sword at his back. Like you know, say what you know, don't don't pull anything or I'll run you through. You right, know, that right, sort of right. Thing. So I've always thought that she was like a really cool um, addition to the cast, and I was happy that they used her because um, she she's a very exotic touch for the show, and she does bring in a link to Batman's martial arts and everything like that. And she's and a, she's you know, within the universe kick-ass, too. Yeah. Like also like for those of us the who are now adults yeah. who have kids watching the show, yeah. yeah. You're like, oh my god, the fucking Batman and the Outsiders, and they're slowly yeah. bringing back. I don't know if they'll do all of them, but yeah. <laughs> she's on the show. Yeah, and Katana was one of the Outsiders. Yeah, one of the episodes, and I think it's their emotional high point to date. It's not quite a uh, heart of ice, but it was the episode that I was like, ah, oh. when it be- debuted, there were a bunch of people online going, oh, I don't like it. it's too fucking antiseptic. Yeah. Like it's just all fighting, and there's no, it's not, you know, of course the. The bar is the animated Batman, the animated yeah. series. 
So right away, if it's not that, just as like with Brave and Bold, yeah. you know, people were like, fuck you. It's not Batman the Animated Series. Yeah. They were dealing with a bit of that in the, in the beginning still. Um, look for a couple episodes because I, you know, talk to people. Yeah. I was like, have you seen it? They're like, oh, I watched half of the first one. I don't know yeah. who those characters are. And shit. Yeah. I was like, yeah, I get back into it. I think they found their absolute footing uh-huh. <clears throat> and like the firing on all cylinders got enough of their backstory told. By the time they got to the Metamorpho episode, they oh, do yeah. an episode where they introduce Rex. What was his name Rex? Um, Rex Mason. Rex Mason, yeah. mm-hmm. security guard, and he's he's with Sapphire. Star, mm-hmm. What's her name? Sa- uh, uh, Sapphire Stag. Sapphire Stag yeah. and her father and shit like yeah. that. And he gets gassed. These different color gases that are basically. The, and as you see yeah. them building it, you're like, Are they going to do it? Are they going to do yeah. it? <clears throat> and they gas him and he turns into yeah. metamorpho, but they play him as the, you know, the monster. He's not like ultimately instantly heroic. Yeah. Um, he's trying to be with the girl and she's like, I can't be with you like this. Yeah. And, uh-huh. she, and then he becomes the monster and Batman's trying to stop him. Yeah. And then, you know, by the end of the episode, they kind of, he gets away, they let him go, but slowly he's not like, I'm a bad guy. They play him like Frankenstein. Yeah. Yeah. And he talks like you know, sad, fuck, yeah. Because he's all gooey and shit. And his dad, or her dad, hates him. And yes, thing, you know, they've got- done it pitch perfect, yeah. dude. Yeah. And so that I felt like they they got it all mm-hmm. right. Where you're like, ooh, they can do the emotional mm-hmm. shit as well in mm-hmm. the you know the CG world. The Humpty Dumpty episode was really good as well, mm-hmm. and it was voiced by Matt Johnson, uh, Badger oh, yeah. from fucking. Um, uh, Breaking Bad, yeah. but he was in uh, in uh, Red State with us. He played yeah. the deputy. But uh, he did a great job. And the fact that they used that character and they also mm-hmm. gave him a kind of sympathetic backstory. Yeah. So they're getting there with it, man. They, I think there's about 12 episodes right now. Yeah. But it's a, an ongoing mythology. So it's it's not stand. – they're kind of standalone, but there's always a previously. Sure. On Beware the Batman because it all ties in. And the yeah. first like six of them, I want to say – are about Katana not knowing that she's been hired by Alfred to watch Bruce Wayne's back. Oh, okay. Alfred knows Bruce Wayne, of course, is the Batman. Uh-huh. But he's like, you're public persona. You know, you need to have a bodyguard. Right. So I'm bringing in one of the, my former, am I, somebody I know from my spying world yeah. days or whatever. Yeah. And it's this girl, Katana, who trained with not the League of... Uh, shadows but the league of assassins they call mm-hmm, them mm-hmm. so lady shiva is a character and she is like the best rendition mm. of lady shiva in i've seen in any of the medium mm. like suddenly made that character not since the question have i been this interested in that fucking character and the chick they got doing her voice the performance the way they draw her, is she's fantastic oh, like great. she's really she's magnetic in that goddamn show yeah and, you know, she just smooth as fucking silk. It could fight Batman and mm-hmm. Katana without mm-hmm. breaking a sweat. Like, she's the world's deadliest, of course. Yeah. Assassin. So, first few episodes are about she doesn't know that Bruce Wayne is Batman. Mm-hmm. She's got the Soul Taker sword yeah. that she stole from the League of, of, of Assassins. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, they're trying to track her down and shit. So, she's hiding out while in plain sight, essentially, while protecting yeah. fucking Bruce Wayne. And then, you know, Bruce Wayne starts fucking, she's sniffing around the mansion and mm-hmm. feels like something's up. And, mm-hmm. you know, and so he's observing her, trying to track him down. And then right. finally he reveals like she lets by accidentally Bruce Wayne gets killed and she feels like it's her fault. Mm-hmm. And the Batman brings her back to the bat cave and shit. And, mm-hmm. you know, she's just like, uh, I, he's saying, well, I've been watching you. And it's the guy who does the voice mm-hmm. does a really good. Kevin Conroy's mm-hmm. ish job, but it's his own thing, but he's yeah. doing a real nice job with it. And it matches the style of animation uh really quite well. But you know, he's talking about like, you know, I I can trust you, I can work with you, and she's just like, Why? I got Bruce Wayne killed, and yeah. then he pulls off the mask and he's like, No, you didn't. <laughs> then Alfred awesome. Ruth comes out of that and he's just like, Welcome to the family, you know, no. and she's like, You're in the bat cave. And suddenly you realize, like, oh my God, she's gonna be Robin. Yeah. And it's so fucking smart because, like, you know, it's tough to get fucking a girl interested where you're like, yeah. look at this boy, look at this boy, look at this boy, yeah. all boys, and they're doing cool shit. And here's a girlfriend. Yeah, yeah. So it's nice that they're like Batman and Robin, and Robin is mm-hmm. this older woman. And instead of doing Carrie Kelly or a younger girl Robin, yeah. you know, she's a highly trained assassin that worked mm-hmm. for governments and blah, blah, blah. And now she's hired as his bodyguard up front. Mm-hmm. That's the only place where it kind of teeters a little bit in terms of reality. I don't know why I'd be looking for reality in a fucking cartoon, yeah, but yeah. 
his bodyguard is a woman named Katana and his sidekick is a woman in a mask named Katana and they both carry so you know what I'm saying there's no it's like Bruce Wayne has a German shepherd Batman has a German shepherd what if we take off the bat, the bat dog's mask it's a German shepherd oh my god it's that the means- it's the Cato phenomenon yeah, dude where yeah. it's just like well wait a second it's Green Hornet and Cato and Brit Hornet's valet I believe and yeah. driver is named Cato yeah, and- there you go but you know, whatever it's cartoon, yeah. you let yeah, it go. Fine. But it is uh, they. There's one moment where they introduce, uh, you know, Jim Gordon doesn't necessarily like Batman. It's early in his career, yeah. so he's always like fire, and the cops are shooting at Batman yeah. and shit. So he's learning to trust him in these first few episodes. Yeah. One of which is like Barbara's threatened a young Barbara Gordon who they paint as something of a fucking Batman freak, and she yeah. keeps articles and yeah. she follows him shit on the internet. So they're paving the way. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, she gets captured and then she's like, uh, you know, they come to rescue her and shit. And she's like, Oh my God, it's Batman. And, mm-hmm. you know, what is your name? <laughs> and, and it, so it, it's really kind of cute. But she at one point, you know, like he's got her in a bunch of gear. He's yeah. training her in the back cave yeah. and she's in one of those like bear proof fucking suits. She's like, yeah. I can't fight in this. I can't move. Yeah. And then she pulls out of the outfit and she grabs the sword and does like a series of fucking moves. Yeah. And the animation is brilliant. It looks oh. fantastic. It yeah. looks like, Pixar did, you Batman. know, er, early Pixar because yeah. you know they don't quite have the, 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 the monetary largesse of the big Pixar the, movies. Uh, you know, Incredibles, they, yeah. but they're but it's beautiful, beautiful yeah, yeah. shit. And so she does a series of fucking sword moves, and then uh, you know he's like, you know, you're not just going out there with a sword. You need a mask. You need a costume mm-hmm. and a or whatever. And so she goes and grabs a fucking robin domino mask yeah and puts it on and that's her fucking mess so she looks even like robin yeah. and stuff yeah. so that's where they are in this in the series now they're building the world it's kind of his year one-ish mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um bringing in these again not using characters like there's no Catwoman, there's no selena kyle there's no reference to the joker yet mm-hmm. no riddler edward nigma mm-hmm. none of that stuff Right. It's just like them going obscure or bringing in new and stuff and, and kind of using different relations. Everything you know about Batman, they flip a little bit, but it still all works. And mm-hmm. gr- I, I've, I've been enjoying it, man. And mm-hmm. I've seen some people who are like, Oh, I don't like it as much, but they s- dropped off after one or two episodes. Watch them all. Now yeah. they've got 12. Sit down. I mean, they go fucking fu- fast and they're beautiful to look at. The action is they're always fucking fighting. Yeah. Um, and it's, you know, it's good looking action, you yeah. know, and so much so that you're just like, why do they even bother making movies? Just do this shit. Like, I know it's been in the works for like two years, two and a half years. Like, it took them a long time to get the animation down right. Yeah. They did a really good job on it. They fucking nailed it. Have you watched any of it yet? I, I've seen parts of it. I think I see, I saw the better part of the Katana episode and I saw a little bit of the, uh, Toad and, and, um, Pig episode. And, uh, they came back in like the last episode. But yeah. they, that I think was like maybe not the episode to leave. I mean, you got to start somewhere. Yeah. But it was just visually interesting. I like those characters. I yeah. mean, the the problem I think some hardcore fans are like like where is that frog? Is he a person? Like Pig yeah. is a guy in a fucking mask. Yeah. Is this toad? Is this is he fucking a real live standing toad that can belch fucking sound waves at people? Like in the world of Batman, for some reason, yeah, we all want our villains tangible yeah. like joker can be punched in the face yeah. he's just a psychotic riddler is a guy in a mask and a fucking cane harvey two-faced dent is just got you know mouth malformed face based on the acid but he's still a human being he's not magical he's yeah. not got superpowers so when you introduce yeah a frog that talks yeah Right away, you know, some Bat fans go, I don't know. I know Grant Morrison did it, but I don't know. So maybe I think people reacted to that as the first Well, yeah, episode. I mean, you know, maybe I did are, a little. They're, they're really colorful characters, but it is sort of like, you know, the Muppet Show. So there's a pig and a frog, you know. And, and I remember in the first episode that Mr. Toad was in, I think he was only in half an issue and then Grant killed him off. And so it, I think it was just sort of the visual of, Batman has fought various characters like the Mad Hatter and, you know, children's, li- you know, warped version of, of literature characters. So there's so, a little wind in the willows. Yeah. So I haven't fight Mr. Toad who's speeding around in a car. But the thing is, I think that he, he might have been part of Professor Pig's Circus of Freaks or something. But the and, and I remember Grant thinking like, well, I, I create these characters out of, you know, I get these ideas if I'm quoting him correctly. And I'm probably not. But 
It's like if somebody wants to take these characters and develop them further, by all means, go ahead and do it. So I think it's up to the people on the show to sort of give them an infrastructure or reason for being a part of Batman's world. Other than that, they're, they're, char- they're colorful characters, but I don't know. I don't know what it is about Mr. P- uh, Mr. Toad or, or Professor or Pig. Professor Pig. <clears throat> other than when I read the Professor Pig stories, he seemed to be mutating people's faces and stuff like that. Which he seemed from. I mean, they don't give a shit ton of uh, backstory right. in, in the show, but he seems to be a very large man in a pig mask who is p- punishing people for animal-related crimes. Uh, okay. bringing justice or balance to the world of man and animal. And he's, got, so, he's got, Professor, come with me, Mr. Toad. and It's the Batman. He speaks oh, it's like, like he's a sidekick of Professor Pro- Pigs or something like the, that. T- well, the, the frog is, is uh, Mr. Toad is voiced by Udo Kier. Okay. So, and, but he's not quite, he's not quite doing like, yes, master. He's yeah. not quite doing Peter Laurie, but a Peter Laurie-ish type voice by way of Udo Kier. Okay. I forget who's doing... Professor Pig, but he's doing it in a voice like this. Oh. Well, the Batman is back, Mister Toad. Oh, okay, that All kind right, of okay. thing. But he's a cool visual because he's a normal man and he's just wearing this fucked up pig mask. In a way, uh-huh. kind of reminds you of the dude blowing the other dude in The Shining. Oh, okay. All right. In that yeah, one yeah, snap yeah. zoom where you're yeah. like, "Oh, he fucked the dude in a bear costume." Yeah. So visually interesting, but then and but clearly a man yeah. with a hacksaw and some fucking crazy ideas. Well, the frog, yeah. you're like, what is this? Is that a man in a costume? Is this a talking frog? Because if we're into the world of talking frogs, fuck you, that ain't Batman. You know, it just <laughs> yeah, starts yeah. falling apart from yeah, me. Yeah. But Grant Morrison is the guy that's just like, look, it all works. Batmite works. This yeah. works. This works. Yeah. So I give it, Grant Morrison can do whatever he wants and I'll follow. You take it on faith. Yeah. There but I know. think there were a lot of people who watched the first episode and bristled against like, this is who they're fucking starting with. Like this talking frog is the bad guy and shit. Mm. But, um, they brought, I, I, these, I like them. I mean, they still haven't described what the fuck he is, but I mean, why do they have to? Like, it's a fucking cartoon. None of this is real, you fat jerk. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, but I just want it to make so much sense. <laughs> it defines me. <laughs> <laughs> um, totally worth watching if you can get past the first few and again it's not even like these first few episodes are such dog shit you got yeah. no there's beautiful to look at yeah. cool shit as they build the world but I'm telling you by the time they got to Metamorpho and Humpty, yeah. hump, Humpty Dumpty yeah they're firing on all cylinders and shit. They're, and they're getting, they're knowing how to balance the humor. Uh-huh. They're, they're, they're getting up there with animated series. Now, that's always going to be the bar. Right. Batman, in terms of writing is Batman, the animated series and the look, Bruce, Bruce Tim's look, of course, to find the characters for a long, long time. But like in terms of being able to tell stories that make adults cry. Yeah. Grab them by the heartstrings, not just the, you know, bunch yeah. of dudes punching each other and yeah. shit like that, that appeals to the kid nature in us. But to tell the emotional stories with yeah. these, you know, g- gruesome little characters, that's the bar that's been set, and they're hitting it now. And just as they hit it, then they've been off the air for feels like two weeks. So I they've taken it off the schedule. What do you mean? It's done? It, no, they canceled it. Cartoon Network pulled it. Oh my god! Yeah, you just fucking. It's. I feel like somebody just got killed in our midst. When did you hear this? Yesterday. Really? At the Hulk recording. Uh, I mean, at the Spider-Man recording. It was uh, We did a Spider-Man recording, and they were talking about it the other day. So they're just done? They're like, nah. Cartoon Network is very arbitrary about what they choose to run. And I know that they have more episodes. I've heard that they have more. I've not talked to Glenn Marikami, you know, who's kind of the, 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 the big guy, the kahuna behind all this. But um, because those are all his designs. And he did great. It yeah. looks beautiful. And I don't know if it's gone for good, but I know that they are not going to run it. They've said, Cartoon Network has said, we're not going to bring it back until January. Oh. And, but I don't know if it's finished or not because. Vote with your wallets and go to iTunes or Amazon, wherever you fucking buy video. Yeah. And buy the season. There's only 12 episodes, man, but show them that you give a fuck. It is, it's worth pursuing. Yeah. I mean, you know, I talked to Cartoon Network years ago, and they said, oh, second season of Tower Prep. And it's like, when does that happen? Tower Prep was uh, Paul's series, live action live show. action series that was on Cartoon Network. We finished running in December of 2010, and they said, well, get ready for second season. And it's like, why are, not you, re- why are you not re-showing it and building the audience? Well, we're giving it a rep. We don't know what we're doing. Well, it changes all the time over there. So I'm hoping they they... 
They but they did that with Green Lantern. They they pulled that after a while, and then they. But it feels like they got like a full season. I feel like there was more than twelve episodes of Green Lantern. Maybe I'm wrong. Uh, I'm not sure if they didn't renew it or if they pulled it or. I know with Beware of the Batman, I, I'm sure they have more episodes, but for whatever reason, they just said, well, there's the DC block and we're going to run Teen Titans Go, but we're giving Batman a rest for now and it'll be back some point. you know. And then I heard January is a point, I, but I, I, there's no way of knowing. I saw a bunch of people were upset with Beware the Batman because they were like, they fucking canceled Teen Titans. Like yeah. the, they just started up another... Yeah. Teen Titans, which was connecting. I don't even know if it was called Teen Titans or not. Young Justice. Young Justice. That's yeah. it. Yeah. And was really connecting with the audience. People were digging it. Yeah. Like Muse loves it. Muse yeah. is like, you got to watch Young Justice, dude. Um, and just as like that audience was like, yeah, right on. We got our Batman, the animated series for this generation. They pulled the plug on it. Yeah. And put it on Beware the Batman. And I think some people were, cause I saw a lot of people bitching online going, they got rid of Young Justice for this. Fuck them and shit. Well, I didn't watch a lot of Young Justice, but what I watched had a very intricate storyline. And yeah, it had, seemed very mythologized in terms of like it carried over episode to episode. I heard that's how they the writers broke it down: is they had huge overarching stories and many then many arcs and arcs within arcs, and the characters were going to go undergo this progression. And that to me is the way we used to do the shows over at Warner Brothers when I was there like ten years ago. Was you know the like with Batman Beyond it was like the big overarching story and you know the surprise twists throughout the season, and it seems like they were even doing more of that with Young Justice. But then there's been this weird, there's been a a a, a sudden trend in animation with superheroes like it's too old, it's too old for our audience, and uh, it has to be younger and it has to be funnier. And that's when I watched the first couple of Teen Titans Go. It's like those are the, the the wacky moments in the Teen Titans cartoon without any of the more serious moments. And let's just do them all fighting over pizza or right. you know running around crazy and everything because our audience, the audience we want to go after, is not the Young Justice audience anymore. We want to go after the little kids who are into boys who are into goofy humor, goofy random humor like on Adventure Time or regular show. We want to do that goofy, you know, that that that's the humor, that's what we're going for. So the Teen Titans Go are reruns of the old show or brand new Teen those Titans? Those are brand Go? new, but those are those based are on the old show. So based on the but on a on a more younger, funnier version of the old uh, of the of Teen Titans of, Go. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're a little cuter now. I just saw yeah. I saw those renditions. Yeah. A little more peanutsy. Yeah. And the stories are about getting pizza or, you know, dressing. Or, you know, I don't I, I, I saw one about pizza or something. You know, I, I, it, didn't, it didn't hold my interest, though, quite honestly. I could watch Young Justice and I could go like, man, Robin's screwing Zatanna now? How did that happen? Boy, that's going to screw up with my continuity. But then, you know. They were uh, doing the stories like that, like adult stories? Were yeah. Fun. I mean, really? they, they had, they had, um, uh, they were having them date and, uh, Aqualad was bad for a while. He was like a traitor and, and the, the the stories really were Buffy style stories, you know, a lot, very very teen heavy. And now the trend has gone back. It's like superheroes are funny, and because they're all for boys, we do not want the girls. I mean, I've heard executives say this, you know, not not where I am, but at other places, saying like we. Do not want girls watching these shows. Why? That's fifty one percent of the population. They don't buy toys. The girls buy different toys. The girls may watch the shows. So you can sell them T-shirts if they don't. A, a, I disagree. I think girls buy toys as well. Maybe not as many as fucking boys do. But B, sell them something else, man. Like that. Just don't be lazy and be like, well, I can't sell a girl a toy. Sell them a T-shirt, man. Sell them a fucking umbrella with a fucking character on it. Something like that. But like if it's not a toy, there's something else you could sell them. Like just because you can't figure out your job, don't kill chances of like, Something that's going to reach an art like that. It's just so self-defeating when people go like these are the same fuckers go. Oh, girls don't read comics. The girls aren't into comics. It's all self-fulfilling prophecies. They just make it that way by going like I can't sell them a toy. What's the point? That's the thing. And I, and I hate being Mr. Sour Grapes here, but I'll, I'll just put it late on the line. That's the thing that got us canceled on Tower Prep. Honest to God was it's like we need boys, but we need girls right there, right one step behind the boys. We, you know, this is the network talking. One step behind the boys, not as smart as the boys, not as interesting as the boys, but right there. And then we began writing stories that got into the the two girls' backstories, and they had and they were really interesting. And suddenly we had families and girls watching and girls 
really became a big part of our audience in sort of like they picked it up in that Harry Potter type of serialized way, which is why the Batman and boarding school is really going to kill. Right. But the Cartoon Network was saying, fuck no, we want boys action. It's boys action and it's goofy boy humor. And we got to get that in there. And we can't. And I'd say, but look at the numbers. We've got parents watching with the families and then they break it down. Yeah, but so many, we've got too many girls. We need more boys. That's heartbreaking. And then that's why they canceled us and they put on a show called Level Up, which is, you know, goofy, you know, nerds, you know, fighting CG monsters. You know, it's like we don't want the girls because the girls won't buy. We had a whole we had a whole uh, merchandise line for Tower Prep that they shit canned um, before it ever got off the launching pad, because it's like boys, 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 boys buy the little spinny tops. They buy the action figures. Girls buy princesses. We're not selling princesses. Dude, I, I do a show called Fat Man on Batman, yeah. and I see reaction on Twitter all the time. Yeah. And I see it equally from, from men and women. It's yeah. not like just dudes going, yes, my old lady won't listen to the show. It's fucking yeah. women as well. Like, they like it too. Yeah. They mm-hmm. may not like, you know, fucking the strictly all boy rendition of it, or maybe they do, but if you can't sell them a fucking toy, Sell them something else. Yeah, I know. Just get better at your job and let storytellers tell the fucking stories and then figure out how to market off of that. But don't just, I can't stand common consensus. Motherfucker's like, well, this is true of everything. Mm -hmm. No, it's fucking not, man. It's like you crack the code, you handle it in a different way. And if you can't push a goddamn action figure on a girl, which I think you can, but if you can't, Fucking, you know, push a fucking T-shirt on a on a girl instead, yeah. or fucking, uh, like, I don't know why I keep going to um, umbrella parasol, yeah, yeah. motherfucker. Well, the bigger the corporation, the more that that feeling is pervasive. Is like pirates are boys, princesses are girls, and with a smaller company, I think that you know you can kind of sell to everybody. But the bigger the company is, they have their flow charts and focus groups, and you know, girls will only buy X amount of this and that and everything else. And it's like, but no, fuck it. A popular show is a popular show. God. Maybe Buffy couldn't have had a action figure line that would appeal to boys as well as girls, but it, ha- it was a killer show. Yeah, and, and it's like not everything fucking yields an action figure, man. Yeah. Like if it does, great, that's gravy. But like, you know, I'm sure they're like, not in a world of Batman, it better have a fucking yeah merchandising aspect to it. But it's like yeah, you'll get there. There's always going to be a fucking bat toy to sell, and there's always going to be a show that that breaks the rules, like Adventure Time. Every place I go at Comic Con, there are kids wearing those little white hats and they're dressed up. And they did a real smart thing where they did a couple of episodes where they changed the, 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 the gender of the characters. Instead of Finn and Jake, it's Fiona and Cake. So we're just going to do an episode of Adventure Time, but with the girl and a cat instead of a, 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 you know, the boy and the dog, and we're going to make them just as interesting. And that way a girl's going to want the, the Fiona and Cake dolls or, or, or something. So we appeal to both. And then you, I'm going to get all Glenn Gary Grill and Glenn Ross. You see? Yeah. You see? That's smart. Yeah. You get you got you go who do you reach out? Who's got money? Yeah. Nurses. You yeah. got one, two, three from a nurse? <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah. You're figuring it out, dude. Yeah. You're not like fucking content to have some cocksucker breaking your rice bowl, as they say in Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross. Yeah. You're like, it's not enough to say, let's just fucking write off the girls. You're like, I found a way to sell to uh, yeah. the girls. And then they say, Well, you can't that uh, adventure time is one in a million. We, you can't plan for that. Oh yeah, you can. You can create a damn good show and let the creative people do it. Yeah. Then they'll line up to buy anything. You know, the character that was most demanded from the Batman line was Harley Quinn. And we fought Kenner for five years before they would make a Harley Quinn. A single figure. It took a while for them to do the action figure. Yeah. And then it's like, no, 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 this will stiff. And then suddenly, you know, with when they brought it out, I remember she was going for like 40 bucks online because you couldn't find it anywhere. She was short packed. There'd be one figure and, you know. In six deep dive Batman uh, cost, you know, uh, figures. Let me ask you this because this yeah. leads nicely into the next topic where I want to go with this. Okay. Um, because we're, I mean, it's heartbreaking to hear the Beware of the Batman is done. I was wondering why hadn't been a new episode in two weeks. I mean, I, I hope they bring it back, you know, because fingers they, they, they crossed. Said they are fucking. They said they are, but raising a ruckus because it's worth fucking, especially if they've got unfinished ep- episodes they haven't run yet. Can you imagine? We we did 65 of the original Batman the Animated Series, and if they kicked us off after episode 12, 
You wouldn't so have got. Would, you never would have gotten to one of my favorite episodes, "Over the Edge." Yeah, we would have. We would have been off with the Sewer King or something like that. Or, <laughs> the or, Clock I, King. This is how it ends. I've got Batman in my basement. Oh my you know, God, the worst way to end any oh, life. God, forced yeah. to watch. I've got Batman in my basement. But here's the thing: I was looking forward to Beware the Batman for two and a half years because I knew that Glenn was sweating over it, and I saw those designs, and it's like a new Batman show. Oh, great! And then they show twelve episodes. I mean. And then they give it a rest, and maybe they'll come back. I don't know. Here's the here's what I was thinking before. I'm not an official source on this, so don't go. So people don't go on the war path by me. I only know that they they took it off. I, I by know. the time they're hearing the show, it might already be out there. But yeah. it hasn't been on the air in two weeks. Oh, that boy. would make sense. Okay. Um, okay. So as mentioned before, uh, a lot of love for Harley Quinn. Yeah. Harley uh, showed up in the, the toys, then showed up in the comics, then yeah. showed up in the game. She's massive. Yeah. Uh, the next, he shouldn't show up in the Nolan verse, but the next mm-hmm. bad iteration coming down the pike yeah. sounds like is Superman versus Batman. Man of yeah. Steel 2, what they're tentatively calling Superman versus Batman. Yeah. Ben Affleck, of course, being cast as um, as Batman, and they're doing this older Batman who's existed a little while yeah. already uh, uh-huh. at work, maybe in the shadows, who knows, but... Ben is older than Henry Cavill. Everyone uh-huh. thought they would cast a younger Batman, same age as Henry Cavill, but they uh-huh. want this Batman. They want a bit of the, based on uh, um, what uh, Zach said at Comic Con, yeah, or how they introduced it. It seems like they're not doing Dark Knight Returns, but they like the elements right. of, you know, the the. I don't like the way you work. I don't like the way you work. Yeah, yeah. You know, and some people were like, "Oh, that's predictable. Make them adversaries," but it's like that's. Come on, man. Like, it's a comic book movie. Yeah. Just like in Avengers. Yeah. They got, sooner or later, they got Dick Swing and fucking be like, I'm fucking right. I'm right. And yeah. And they come together and fucking do the right thing. Yeah, yeah. And that's a movie. You got to have that fucking beat. Yeah, yeah. So, naturally, there'll be a bit of an adversary relationship. Who knows what Goyer's working on, David Goyer's working on, mm-hmm. as the exact story. But there'll be an adversarial element there. And, mm-hmm. and, and this mind races when they announced this at Comic Con. We haven't spoken, uh, yeah. at least on the show since then. Yeah. When they announced it at Comic Con and showed the graphic, you were just like, I can't, can you feel a brand new day? <laughs> like, yeah. I can't believe we've reached this place where we're going to see a fucking this happen in the movie. And then there were grousers online going, yeah. yeah, but who wants this version of it? Fuck you. I'll watch any version of a Batman yeah. Superman movie and stuff. Yeah. But you raise a great point, man, when you talked about the popularity of Harley Quinn. This is their first chance yeah. to do Harley without having to do a whole movie about it, without yeah. having to do origin uh-huh. or anything like that, to just basically go like, we're going to hit the ground running, uh-huh. and here's a... You don't even have to include her in the whole fucking movie. Right. Like, just when you're seeing, like, you know, you're starting, of course, it's Man of Steel, so you're starting in Metropolis or whatever, right. but when you get to Gotham... yeah. Or or you do some sort of thing, you know, where's Br- Wayne or where's Bruce? You guys did it in the in the show. Like, yeah. He's running late. And then he cut to a shot of him chasing fucking Killer Croc across the rooftop or whatever. Yeah. But in the movie, it's not Killer Croc, dude. Mm. It's fucking Harley Quinn. Yeah. And you don't have to do the whole backstory. Uh-huh. But you already kind of put her out there. Yeah. First taste. First, like, Boba Fett-like taste yeah. uh-huh. into the universe of her being chased by fucking ba- ba- Ben Affleck, Bruce Wayne. Batman yeah. across a rooftop and then fucking doing that matrix like hurl backwards and firing fucking, you know, yeah. guns at him that have huge corks and yeah. boom pow on him and uh-huh. but are also also lethal somehow. Yeah. Grenades or something. As yeah. she fucking like falls backwards right before, you know, she throws out a line or something. So yeah. It's time. Yeah. I'm not even now you're the creator of this character. Yeah. You know, sooner or later, it's going to happen. Yeah. As popular as the character has been in the Arkham games and whatnot, there are people that know my daughter in school Yeah, by her name, but not from fucking the animated series, from the Arkham games. Like, right. oh, Harley Quinn. I play yeah. that game all the time and shit yeah. like that. As the guy who created Harley Quinn, yeah. would you like to see them do full Harley movie? Or fucking give you a taste of Harley and leave it wide open for a Harley treatment in the future. Like, she don't die at the end of the shot or something like that. I'm, you know, it's flat out fucking, by the end of the sequence, 
you know, her trussed up right. and fucking being dragged into the Arkham cart and shit like that. And him on the rooftop looking down, her screaming up at him. I think that that would be a great cold opening, you know, cold introduction to Batman is because she's got enough of a fan cachet and, and is well known enough that and certainly would be, you know, enough fun to for to have Batman take her out of action. Mm-hmm. Uh, do I think she could hold her own movie um, you know, in theory? You know, at some point, maybe she's a little bit better, better known. It's also how they establish her either with the Joker or as an agent of the Joker or something like that. If the Joker is in this movie, which I, which I don't know. Yeah. I, I, I wonder, th- I mean, think about it. If you're these cats, do you really have, I mean, do you throw the fucking house at everybody? Like right now they've already said it's man of steel too. So Superman's coming back, which, and we know Lex Luthor is going to be involved. Right. So we're going to meet Lex Luthor. So bang, bang, the new cinematic DC universe, is seeing the big gun, a bad guy. Right. On top of that, they add to it, guess what? Batman's going to be in it as well. Right. And, you know, we were all like, which Batman? Will it be fucking Christian Bale? Is it going to be Jer- uh-huh. Joseph Gordon Levitt? What the fuck? Then they said, our own brand new Batman. We're kick starting our universe with a new Batman. He ain't going to have his own movies. He's going to start in this movie and then eventually have his own movies and shit. Right. Smart makes absolute fucking sense because putting Batman in that Superman sequel mm-hmm. means it's going to make a gazillion bucks mm-hmm. right away. Batman versus Superman. I, you know, some people have mocked me online for saying it. It makes two billion worldwide. Of course. It has to, dude. My mother is going to Superman. You put a versus in the title. Yeah. Superman versus Batman. So there's many times my, my mother will instantly be like, I, did, I didn't know they were not friends. I, 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 I want to see if they're going to fight. Um, my mother is Adam yeah, Sandler, yeah, of course. Yeah. But, um, the, uh, it, 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 everyone's going to that movie. So they've already gilded their lily. They've already have a, enough people going, yeah. I'll come back from fucking Lex Luthor. And yeah. especially if you cast, say, a Brian Cranston as Lex Luthor. Sure. Motherfuckers going to line up. Yeah. But they're like, just in case that ain't getting them through the door, guess what? Like, we're not done. Yeah. Like, Hold on. Yeah. Just, but, but wait, don't yeah. call yet. There's more? <laughs> they add fucking Batman to it and a new version of Batman and shit. And so yeah. you're going to get an element of the fight. If, if you want to gild your, if you want to, if you want to make $3 billion, yeah. Yeah. then yes, you put in a Joker. Yeah. And Joker is the, but now we're talking to the man who did world's finest there, yeah. there's already this ain't the first time batman and superman ever gonna meet they met in the comics yeah but in the animated world you were you were you were there for the the storyline what well, it was called world's, world's finest. finest yeah we and did they the later series. put it out as the batman superman movie yeah, or something yeah. like that uh-huh. but it was the colliding of two fucking worlds right including the classic piece if you've never fucking seen it we'll do commentary track for it did we do one for that one? No, we just did the other episodes. I think so. I don't think we did that one. No. Um, it looks always very smoky in the back in the fact. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes <laughs> we forget some shit. Well, that's why I'll bring Alan Burnett. If we if we do the Batman Superman one, then he's got to be. Was here he chiefly in charge? Oh yeah. Man? Oh yeah. Yeah. That has that beautiful moment where you know fucking Superman and Batman meet, and Superman looks under Batman's cow with his x-ray vision. He's Bruce like, Bruce Wayne. Wayne. Yeah. You know, and Batman's like, you know, peeking or whatever. <laughs> so you're like, oh, fuck. Yeah, right away, they've that. just met, yeah. and he fucking looked, and he knows he's got him at a yeah, disadvantage. Yeah. yeah. And then beautiful moment later on in the episode, because it was like, what, two, three-parter? Yeah, it was three-parter. Um, they, they show Clark Kent flying home to the top of his apartment building and yeah. coming through the skylight or whatever, uh-huh. and, you know, putting on his clothes putting on his glad being clark Kent, taking yeah. off the superman costume yeah and then he looks on his costume he uh-huh. takes it off and on his cape there's a bat tracker yeah and then he looks around and out his window x-ray and telescopic, he's used the vision. X-ray telescopic vision yeah. and you see across yeah. rooftops and then the distance there you see a cape flowing and there's he's batman going. with binoculars <laughs> and he just waves back at <laughs> yeah, him like yeah. i know your fucking secret yeah. bitch such a great moment if yeah. they, uh, why not just flat out steal that? There I, is no I need to that. Yeah. create anything new. I mean, some people be like, try it better. Fuck you. That is such a perfect moment. Yeah. And, you know, you can make the art. It'll please every fucking fan. Mm-hmm. And anybody who's not a fan because they've never watched cartoons or some yeah. shit shit would love that moment played out cinematically as yeah. well. Yeah. Um, I think they should steal liberally from what you guys did. I you, agree. Who was the writer, chief writer? Oh, well, it was me, Alan, and I think Steve Gerber got in on a That's little right. bit of we that. We talked about that yeah. last time. Yeah, uh, but uh, we we wrote. 
pretty much the lion's share of that. And uh, it, it's like, yeah, by all means, they own the story, they own the character. Take take whatever you want from it. You know, steal liberally, steal liberally. There you go. But a little, uh, uh, thanks to at the end would be uh, appreciated, although not you know. Maybe you get something like, "Well, President Dini," <laughs> yeah, some kind of nod to your work in the past. Yeah. Um, yeah, man, it is, uh, bat, the uh, Superman versus Batman is, uh, is coming. Have you talked to Ben about it? I haven't just by email. Oh. I sent him an email. A lot of people, of course, once that broke, they're like, you gotta get him in the fucking fat cave and shit. I'm yeah. like, naturally, yes, I would love to. I don't have that kind of relationship where I like see him. Oh, ever anymore. Uh-huh. So, but yeah. you know, email and shit like that. Yeah. So I knew it's like, he ain't, of course he ain't going to talk about it here first. He went on Jimmy yeah. Kimmel and talked about it and whatnot, but there's nothing really to say because, mm-hmm. you know, he's still like a year out from even shooting. Yeah. But still, I was like, hey, I was coming up on episode 50. So I was like, oh, shit, if I could snag him for episode 50, that'd yeah. be great. So I hit him up in the email going, hey, man, doing uh, how are you doing? For great news and all that shit. Yeah. Doing this podcast uh, and the last one, I, you know, fucking suck your bat dick. Yeah. You can give it a listen here. I said, come over, be on, because this is a Ben's old house. So come yeah. over, be a two-year-old place yeah. and do Bat- Fat Man, Batman 50. But he wrote back, he's like, would love to, but I'm in St. Louis shooting. I guess he's shooting Gone Girl or getting ready to shoot Gone Girl or something uh-huh. like that with yeah. Fincher. So he's like, when I come back, totally, I'll come over and stuff. Awesome. So it ain't uh, a dead issue. He'll no. eventually be in the fat kid yeah, and stuff. Yeah. But I, I haven't, I've spoken about it, but I haven't spoken to him about it by, ver, except in that email exchange that I just described. I think it'd be great. Yeah, I mean, right. You know, I brought his name up 10 years ago when I, briefly Alan and I were going to do, uh, Batman meets Superman back when uh, Wolfgang Peterson was involved. You guys were going to write the script? Well, what happened was this was um, we were we were brought in by Boaz Yakin to work with him on Batman Beyond as an idea, you know, and we developed a as script. a feature version of Batman. Beyond. Yeah, a live action feature. And what happened was after the first draft went in, uh, you know, the, the script was sort of at an impasse and Boaz had an opportunity to go off and do another film. And that left me and Alan kind of, you know, over at Warner Brothers going like, okay, Boaz has, has gone on to another project. We're still here. You know, what do, what do we do? You, you know, we owe you some work. You owe us some money. And for briefly, we were thinking about, okay, let's just do another Batman, a, a, a straight ahead Batman movie, you know, and, and we went in and talked to Jeff Robinov about it. And I said, well, okay, you know, you do. You look at the Bond movie. Man with the Golden Gun wasn't the greatest Bond movie, but then they do The Spy Who Loved Me, and that was terrific. So let's do a, just a straight-ahead Batman Bruce Wayne movie. And he was thinking about that for a while. And then he said, what about Batman versus Superman? You know, Because we've been kicking around that idea too. So we went off and we took some ideas there, and we had actually come up with some some pretty good stuff that had uh, – you know, that went back and touched on Superman's origins, kind of intercut it with Batman's origins. And and then, uh, again, you know, we were kicking around ideas for Luther and Joker and stuff like that and, and some good stuff. And then, you know, what ultimately happened was uh, it just sort of collapsed. You know, these, you know, the interest of the studio level turned, as it will, you know, away from these characters for a while. And sometimes for years at a time, they'll say, you know what, we're going to. Think about about Batman in a different way for right now. And so until when we was figure this? out what year, I kind of remember the Wolfgang Peterson version. 2000, 2001. It so was, it's post Batman and Robin when yes. the Warner Brothers like let's get away from Batman for a yeah. while. And comic book movies were dead, but then yeah. Blade happens. Yeah, and then I think I want to say Spider Man was after Blade or X Men. Uh, Spider Man, and then X Men was after that. Yeah, and when did uh, and when was uh, Batman Begins? Was that two thousand six? That was after Blade and after X Men yeah. and after. So yeah, I was sh- yeah two thousand six. I want to say two thousand five, yeah. two thousand six. I was long gone from Warner's. I left it in two thousand four to go work on Lost, and then so this was like that yeah. period where it was after the. It was maybe that's how they were going to reboot interest yeah. in comic book yeah. movies. And they had actually had kind of a storyline worked out for Batman and Superman, and they asked us to work with it. And uh, at one point, it involved what your was old, the storyline. It was it involved your old pal John Peters, you know, because he was attached to of it. Of course, because so of Superman was involved. He was pushing for that movie. That was yeah. when I was writing Superman Lives. Yeah, he was going. We get this right. You know what the next one is? 
Batman versus Superman. That's and I was right. Like, oh my god! I'll sit here and do all the and listen to the crazy and deal with your crazy if yeah. we can get to that fucking movie. Yeah. But that was yeah. He dreamed about like you got to get these two fucking fighting. I was trying to explain like well. You don't really earn that, like, unless you're doing Dark Knight Returns, because that takes a look at Batman's life, you know, toward the end of it. Yeah. And so he's had years to build this complicated relationship with Clark. And these yeah. yeah. guys are just like, I just want to see Superman punch fucking Batman in the tit. <laughs> and so that's all they know about it. The yeah. idea of heroes fighting appeals to them where it's yeah. like, look, it appeals to me as well. But. It's their ideological battle yeah. that is most interesting, you know, yeah. because Batman is a man fighting a god, and so that yeah. he stands up to him at all is amazing. Yeah. But still, you are talking about a man fighting a god, so it can't be this constant battle. You right. Know? But it's been a battle of wits sometimes yeah. for years and a battle of how they do things, uh, at least as as they portray the characters lately. Right, right. So they were talking about reboot an interest in the comic book movie at Warner Brothers. Right. With this proposed Batman Superman movie that that uh what's his face? Wolfgang um, Peterson was who doing. had directed like well Das Boot. Yes. Um and most recently I think he did the the Poseidon, didn't he? Yeah. Poseidon yeah. Adventure. But he'd done like a bunch of shit, made money and whatnot. You know, ultimately I don't well, know if he was the guy for it to be honest with you. You know, what happened was we wound up going in with several pitches to an assistant. Mm. And, you know, a guy who worked with Wolfgang and running a bunch of ideas. And then we'd spend hours going, you know, like it never got any, it never got to a real place where we were talking to real people about a real you right. know, movie. It got, you know, for hours we'd say like, so why does Lois, so, so, okay, back up, back up, pitch to me again. Why does Lois have a falling out with Clark? And it's like, because there's a lack of trust there and this and that. I can't really see it. So, you know, we're, we're going to have, a, we were going to have a meeting with Wolfgang next week, but, you know, work out over some more and come back to us. You know, it was like a, you know, Clark, Clark had sort of moved his relationship with Lois, both as Superman and Clark was on the skids and Batman was off in. You so know, that Bruce could make his move on Lois. It was something there. I, honestly, that's God, I don't that, remember that's what. It, in the animated, that's was kind of like, you know, Bruce was. Well, hello, Ms. Lane. Yeah. Yeah. It was, she knew that he was Clark and Superman. And it was sort of like, all I remember about it was they had had, I don't think they were married, but they had had a relationship that had be like, she knew he was Superman and Clark. They had had a sexual relationship mm -hmm. and it was sort of like the day to day reality of being involved with a guy who's always going to put the rest of the world in front of you, no matter how much he says he loves you. Lois was ready to move on, and Clark was having a hard time dealing with that. That uh -huh. seems to be the, that was the beat that I played in, in the Superman Live script as really? well. Like yeah. in a world where she knows who he is, yeah, like that's their happily ever after. Like right. Lois knows that Clark is Superman, and she gets to be with both the nice guy and the even nicer guy who happens to be a god. So you know that's not interesting in terms of creating conflict for characters right. when characters are happy. So the beat that you tend to play when yeah. she knows and they're in a relationship is, you know, her going, I can't share you with the world, it, it, you know, because like yeah. you're, you belong to the world. You're, I can't, you know, be mad at you. You missed a soccer game because you yeah. saved a bunch of people in, from fall, dying in a plane crash in Peru. Right. And so it's tough to fucking make her like seem like anything but like douchey when you're doing something right. like that. Like that's what I, in, in the script that I wrote, I realized years later, it's just like, why don't let that be the source of tension let her right. be like look i get it yeah it's like being married to a doctor or a fucking cop yeah. except yeah. even better and you can do shit fast and yeah. these are important things and like i know you're always coming back like that was lois before she made the turn you know that was that was where we were going to take her right she had not made that turn she was realizing that this relationship i'm at a crossroads with this relationship and i can either leave or i can go back and i can be uh, you know, I, I can help support it in my way. Right. And there was something. And then what happened was that allows there, Bruce to get in and be like, hello. <laughs> <man."> <laughs> so it dealt with her turn off. back to him. And then and for whatever reason, the assistant couldn't buy the turn back. You know, like why she would come back to him after that. And, and then, you know, but the action was worked out. All the, the drama, the Batman. Stuff. Oh, I get all the Batman stuff. I get all the Superman stuff. I get all the, 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 the big stuff. But, you know, this, this little thing is hanging me up. So we're not going to make the movie at all. So it's like. It just went away. Yeah. And, and that to me is like when you have, 
Probably well, had something to do. I think Wolfgang had a movie too that it, it also did. Yeah, and it wasn't it wasn't out. quite a, a high priority at that point. So when you've got plot holes like all of Metropolis is being destroyed, buildings are falling, and and the only three people are endangered are Perry White, you know, and 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 two other people. <laughs> We're just not dealing with that other stuff, you know. Right. That that to me is a plot hole. Not you know Lois. About ready to go back to Superman, but needing one little thing to to reconvince her is not a big deal, right? And that's not a deal killer. But you know, when it doesn't matter if you make the movie or who makes the movie or whatever, it's that's not going to happen. So that's when it all fell apart. We got a final check from them. Thanks for playing, suckers. See you later. <laughs> At least you got paid. We got paid. You Some know? people sit there and go like, imagine if Superman did this and then Batman did this and then Lois said this and they don't get a check for it <laughs> <I> know, <laughs> at all. Oh, well, you <laughs> Just got the paid, pleasure didn't you? of imagining. Yeah, I did yeah. when I worked. On on the Superman script. Yeah. I did. I got, and I remember from the day I sat down to talk about the job to the day that I was done with the job, even when they were like, we're, you know, t- we're moving on with Tim and he wants to bring on his own writer and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. I was still advocating for like, you guys should really reach out to the people that work in comics or the people that work on the Batman animated series. Yeah. Because my God, these guys are like, they understand this character real well. And that was in the days of bias with like comic book people. Yeah. yeah. And that- now fucking uh, a comic book person type guy yeah. Yeah. did the Avengers. Yeah. That's what turned me off. I, I, I told, called my agent, no more superhero movies. Mm. I just, I, 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 you know, it's just like I, I'm generating ideas for got, for assistants who want to be off at the opening of some opening night of a party somewhere are going to relay badly to somebody who's going to take it up to the director at some point. And, you know, it's, you know, let me write something at least and like about a year or two later, the final nail of the coffin was when they wanted a Zatanna movie and they called me about that. And it's like, you just, I, I can't talk to you guys. Why? Why didn't you want to pursue a Zatanna movie? Well, what happened was I had written a novel, a graphic novel called Everyday Magic. And then I guess somebody with a, some producer with some sort of deal, tangential of Warner Brothers, had read it and they said, we, we're looking at this character for a possible movie. And, uh, and they called me and they said, hi, we're sitting in a room. I'm going to produce this movie. We have a couple of A-list writers who are going to write the movie. We need a log line from you and a story pitch. And we need uh, you basically to kind of outline the movie as you see it. And I said, am I going to be paid for this? It's like, no, you're not going to be fucking paid. You work for um, you work for animation and animation is a research division of Warner Brothers. And uh, you should be lucky to talk to us. And I said, look, you know, call my agent. And I hung up on him. It's like you've got writers sitting there. You've got my graphic novel. Adapt the damn thing. What do you need me for? Yeah, really. Give me the assignment or not. That's a movie. That is a movie that I would totally watch as a Tana movie. I would too. And so they called my agent screaming, and my agent screamed back, and that was the last I ever heard from them. And I said, no more, no more superhero adaptations, unless it's a character that I own myself. You know, at least let me get in on it. And so, I think you know, they either make it with me or not. Um, but it never holds you back from like movie comes out. You're like first in line, motherfucker. Oh, I'll go see anything. Yeah. I love them all. You know, seeing the characters come to life, seeing them do it. I think Affleck will do a good job. I've talked about it many, many places, but I think he'll do a really good job, but I would just, Oh, well, I I got the point, but he was like our first, you know, Al and I were both pitching Ben Affleck for, for, for Batman back Back then. then. Yeah. yeah, Wow, man. So this is what year two? Uh, it was around two. It was about ten years ago, ten eleven years ago. Right before the Geely and Jersey Girl of it all. Yeah, he can, he is, I think it's going to be really good. And, and well, during Jersey Girl, when I was out visiting, you know, and we did those late night shoots in the video store, mm. and Ben and I would talk about comics, and we'd always talk about Batman. I see this guy knows Batman backwards and forwards. He'd be a great Batman. Look so, at that shit. Yeah. He was fucking. He was like Nostradamus. What? You oh, yeah, it. Yeah. You oh, figure yeah. it out yeah. early on, yeah. man. You were yeah. like, he's got a taste for it. I think I think he will do a fucking crusher job on it. I think so too. Um but begin it like yeah. like steal liberally from fucking the animated series. That's what I would do. And I would credit it. I'd yeah. just be like, Oh my god. All I'm doing is stealing from the fucking best and trying to put it in a three dimensional world. But I mean Zack Snyder, he's always got very yeah. original deals ideas of his own and shit. And all props to, you know, Heath Ledger who was great, you know, and I, I can understand like they may not want to go near the Joker because of that. Right. But that was in uh, his, his, yeah. the, I mean, I'm not saying <laughs> yeah. like they're done with Nolan, but yeah. they're done with the Nolan verse, man. They're starting yeah. their own universe. Yeah. Like I know they're like, why would we waste it? Or, you know, because we could use that yeah. as a big gun. I mean, maybe that's their philosophy. They're like, look, dude. We've already got Batman. We've already got Superman and Lex Luthor and now Batman. And now you want us to fucking throw in the Joker. Like, we need that for 
Batman 1 or Superman 3 yeah. or maybe even the Justice League movie. But what yeah. they should do is – couple more supermans maybe a flash maybe a, definitely a wonder Woman yeah. standalone take steel from marvel do batman last and shit and then that leads into justice league there you go oh yeah. my yeah. god yeah you know set up everybody looks like they're doing it goyer seems like he knows yeah. what he's fucking doing um, how would you do justice league if you were, they i would do. still i would just basically do what marvel did where i'd be like here's here's our new world super and they're doing it they yeah. like to use uh, Man of Steel as their Iron Man, the spine on which the central yeah. character on which they build their cinematic universe. Mm -hmm. So you got some Man of Steel. In the next Man of Steel, they're introducing Batman. Fantastic. Yeah. Maybe yeah. you introduce, um, you know, a, a, a fucking at one point, uh, they've got to go to, uh, out of town and they meet a young, uh, forensics, uh, expert you know, working for the police department named Barry Allen. And you just meet yeah, him. Yeah. So you seed the earth a little bit and yeah. fucking, you know, there, maybe your tail end post credit sequences like him in the lab and the lightning hitting or something yeah, like that. Yeah. Little tease, whatever. But I'd start the, so you got there, Man of Steel 2, you got some Batman. Yeah. Next movie, I would, I would honestly keep doing, I would wait till Man of Steel 3, mm -hmm. maybe. Although off of Man of Steel two, they're not going to go right into a Batman off of Man of Steel two because yeah. it's too fucking close and they don't need to, and they'll use him probably as their fucking he's their sucker bait, right? Yeah, it's yeah. like doesn't matter. They could put him in every movie now. They could put him in a fucking Aquaman movie. They put him in Green Lantern. They have to redo something about Green Lantern. Yeah, but use Batman as like and Batman, and they'll yeah. everyone will fucking go. Yeah. So I'd build them up. I'd build like I'd I'd make. I do like what Marvel did. Do one wave two, and by the end of wave two, yeah. we're at the Justice League movie. Introduce yeah. the characters all in their own fucking features or being supported by – maybe you do it like, okay, the first one was Superman, second one is Superman, Batman. Mm -hmm. So maybe the third one is Batman and some, and Wonder Woman. Right. And then the next one is Wonder Woman and Flash. So everybody hands off to the other and supports them, and then you could always get you know cameos from the rest of those fuckers. But in each nominal hero, say it's a Wonder Woman movie, you would have a Flash appearance, much like I think so. It have, wouldn't just be like yeah. Wonder Woman by herself, all origin, all year one, yeah. all, and nobody else knows each other. Yeah. I would start... Like, they know it works. They see with the Marvel Cinematic Universe, they're like, these fans love the fact that these things, and when we say fans, we don't just mean the, like, fucking dusty loners in their parents' basements that we yeah. never like to fucking talk about. I'm talking about parents and their kids and fucking, these movies are making billions because these people like that they're fucking interconnected. You know, you get to sell, it's the next one and have a sequel that's not quite a sequel, just mm -hmm. set within the universe. And, so, I mean, it works financially. Might as well do it here and just never yeah. let them stand alone. Like you yeah. see, and I watched the Captain America trailer, Winter Soldier. Yeah. There's uh, Black Widow. There's Black all, Widow. All through it. There's fucking Falcon, who at one point, you know, they, they show him bust his wings open and shit. Nick Fury. They're Nick all in there. Fury. I mean, it's just your, your butt. It's Avengers. Sink. Point point two, you know, just like I, yeah, yeah, just I mean that, and that's the way to do it. That's I mean, again, I'm, I'm I wouldn't be credited with being the most original thinker. I'd be like, I just stole this idea from Kevin Feige and all the yeah. Marvel dudes, yeah. man. This is the way to fucking do it, and the fans go absolutely ape shit. That's the thing that has held us <laughs> back is no Kevin Feige, no Kevin Feige thinking that you could introduce these characters in cameo appearances and make it all one big connected world. Maybe not connected to X Men and Spider Man, but certainly. The Hulk, Captain America, Iron Man universe. So that's all. That's all there. You know. Um, do you think they'll ever be able? Marvel will ever make a strike a deal with uh, Sony or whoever, and so we'll see fucking Spidey in Marvel Avengers type universe. I think. Uh, I think there's Swing a lot by. of yeah. even a reference to a fucking you know. There's a, a some type of arachnid boy. I wouldn't put it past them. I think they're they're deals that have to be ironed out, and I think that as. The characters Disney, are dude. absorbed I'm, into I'm, Disney. That's what I'm saying. If I'm Disney, I'm just like, look, we will open up the fucking Scrooge McDuck's vault. Yes. And let you take a bucket yeah. and take out some of our fucking sweet ass fat dick Disney yeah. money. Yeah. Just let us reference Spider-Man for the kids. The kids love this sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Fucking yeah. who? who's hurt by that? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like they still at the beginning uh the uh, trailers for non marvel marvel yeah. movies like yeah. spider-man they still have the marvel card up there yeah so for all intents and purposes the unsavvy fucking american mm -hmm. 
just goes, ah, Marvel, it's the same thing. X-Men, they're all in the same world. They they're don't realize Stan Lee that. Walking through the background. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So they don't get that fucking everybody's, you yeah. know, section them off and shit. But just start sharing the wealth, breaking off a little piece, uh, let them wet their beaks a little. Yeah, because the five the time, families of fucking yeah. comic book movies. And and reference away, man. Just go fucking ape shit. Because the next iteration of these, which will all be Disney produced, it was when they're all under the umbrella. We'll be in our 60s probably by then. Is the Fantastic Four Spider-Man Hulk movie because... The, Versus Mickey Mouse. There you Donald, go. And Donald, Donald and Duck. Minnie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, fucking... That would be amazing. That would be awesome. And the Muppets. <laughs> and, and Darth Vader. <laughs> We've just made the ultimate movie. <laughs> we're pitching that next, there man. You go. We're going to set up Shadow of the Bat, and then we're going to pitch the best movie ever. And it's fucking the ultimate team-up movie. Yeah. All the Marvel Universe stars from the cinema. This is Patton Oswalt's pitch on Parks and, <laughs> Parks and Rec. Okay, we got to bring Patton Oswalt in to pitch it. <laughs> He's going to be the godfather as well. Yeah, there he you go. He gets to play Fozzie Bear. <laughs> 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 well, there it is, folks, man. We've sat here and, and geeked out over the bat as we, as we do here in the yes. Fat Cave. Um, with the best of them, uh, yes. Paul Dini, give us some, some fucking inside dope, man. Yeah. On the Batman versus Superman movie that almost was. Yep. Shit. A little bit. Yeah. I remember that as well as many other fucking things. Mm -hmm. uh, check out Hulk and the Agents of Smash. And what else are you working on? You got anything oh. coming up for the holiday soon? Jingle Bellish or no? Uh, I'm you always tend to do something around the holidays. Yeah, I don't have a Jingle Bell book out this year, but what I'm doing is uh, I'm 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 starting a brand new website, which will be my you know pauldini.com, and it'll be like one stop Dini thing. I've never a Jingle Bell's had a web shop a, a web a website. I've never had one, but I'm going to do a weekly comic series in there, and so for half a year it'll be Jingle Bell, half a year it'll be something else. So nice. and then I'm going to look at collecting all the strips into into volumes and selling them. And I uh, got this guy, David Alvarez, this terrific artist uh, who's doing Jingle Bell, and he's he's really killing himself on the strip. So probably in, in November, December, we're working on the next story. It'll be like a weekly, like a Sunday comic page with Jingle Bell in it. And I know that Paul's working on a secret project that she ain't going to talk about, but when you hear about it, oh, it's going to be fucking fantastic. Uh, yeah. And we'll talk about it here. It's not Batman related, but it, it's not Batman, but I would say it's kind of Batman related. Yeah. Uh, when we can, uh, when, once it's announced, mm. uh, we can, uh, talk a little bit about that. It's, but uh, it's, it's, a, it's, it comes a, from the same mental place. Let me put it that way. Oh, it's a big gun. It's going to be fantastic. Yeah. But, uh, we thank, uh, Master Maestro, uh, uh, uh the McCartney to my Lennon. <laughs> Uh, Paul Dini for returning to the fat game, not just returning, but returning with fucking buckets of bat. Man. Yeah. You just come loaded for fucking bearers. We learned some shit over the last two fucking episodes. Yeah. Happy so, to come back anytime. Yeah. We ain't going to make you wait fucking 40 episodes next time. Next okay. time, uh, get in here sooner and we'll go back and watch that. I'm, I'm still here struggling, reeling to remember if we watched batman superman or if we just talked about watching batman, we watch batman beyond and we watch do we watch mask of the phantasm i don't think we watch mask of the phantasm i think we watched mask of the did we fuck somebody somebody help us out help us. <laughs> I know, we have the power of the internet at our fingertips and we're still trying to remember things like we need to um well when he come back we'll go over uh one of those man if it's not if we haven't done batman superman movie that would be the one to do next so yeah we probably watch snow white or something <laughs> <laughs> We're like, why won't Batman stop eating that apple? It's going to make him sick. Why are there seven little robins? <laughs> what, like, what were you we running that day? Um, so, okay, I'll bring Alan back for the Christmas episode. Yeah, let's do that. There we oh, go. Okay, when I come great. back from Tusk, uh, we'll do the Christmas episode in December awesome. and whatnot. I want a full report on that. That sounds great. It's fucking strange. There's a little, there's elements of, uh, there's a, my, you know, basically the script. Uh -huh. is like a greatest hits of Smodco in terms of like I there are references all over. Uh -huh. But nothing like, you got to know all these references, you won't like the movie. It's just like little nods. Instead uh -huh. of just using random character names, pull uh -huh. names from fucking podcasts. But there's all throughout the movies, a, a Easter egg peppered with references to things nice. from, that, uh, from the Smodco universe. And Batman, without referencing Batman, yeah. Batman is touched on oh i imagine very briefly yeah. it's it's kind of without even like you know what batman would do when he was getting a blowjob nothing like that yeah, yeah but in the cinematic storytelling of this movie in a flashback sequence yeah there is an homage to to the bat himself and and, and you'll you'll see when you see the movie but um yeah. yeah man it's 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 fucking weird flick but when i come back from shooting that weird flick 
for Christmas, we'll sit down with Christmas with Alan Barnett, Bar- Burnett. And not only will we talk about the Christmas episode, but we'll talk specifically about yeah. Super Batman versus Superman or Batman. Or what was it called? World's Finest. World's as the Finest. episodes were called, but they called it the Batman Superman movie. And he can also give you an update on what's happening with Beware the Batman. Cause that's he right. He's, yeah, exact, I see his name in the credits yeah, all yeah, the time yeah. as well. That's right. So we'll get it right from the horse's mouth. He'll yeah. tell us who to fucking kick in the balls. <laughs> there you go. Give us our fucking show back. Yeah. Um, so there it is, folks. Come back, uh, next week. Same fat time, same, same fat, fat channels, channels. modcast.com.